and let's go ahead and turn that down for the moment and bring up our foreboding music in preparation. You gotta have some spooky music. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Crucial. That was nice music. Crucial to that. Mm. 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 Oh, there we go. Oh, that sounds ominous. <laughs> That's the idea. I'm a little scared. We go back to the harps. And <laughs> you, want, you want the birds and the harps? <laughs> like when you watch TV shows and you have the, you know, the words at the bottom and it gives you like hopeful music or. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> music. Yeah. They have some of those that they describe, and I'm like, I don't know what that would be called. I don't know how you would ever describe that. Okay. That's funny. Disney ride. Right? <laughs> to go on yeah. and the music. <laughs> yeah. I was just at Disneyland just a couple weeks ago, so you know I know the music well then. Tell it. How was it? Um, it was really hot. We went there during the middle of the heat wave on yes. the holiday weekend. It was 108 degrees. Oh, no. I live How in Florida, so I can I understand. I live in South Florida, so I can. Yeah, we had no that. choice, though. We had already rescheduled uh, it's for my boy's uh, birthday. We had rescheduled because we had had COVID over their birthday. So oh, no. we had already had to move it once. And we're like, OK, we're just doing it. But it actually wasn't too bad. <laughs> like we. Went in the morning, then we went back to the hotel for the mid after the middle of the day, and then went back at night. Smart. That's a wise yeah. decision right there. Very wise. Very smart. Thomas, thank you for the sub. We'll give ourselves just another moment here. Let a few people gather. I have my good luck kobold with me. <laughs> May it bless you with abundant luck. Oh, yeah. Where's my, uh, I got to have my mad chatter here. This is, I, of all, and I'll show this, of all of, of all of Manda's creations, none is better than this little guy. My little mad chatter that she oh, knit. Yes. Oh, no, I still like oh. my kobold, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank you very much, Patrick. And hey, I think we've got a raid. Uh, thank you so much, and good to have the whole crew jumping in here tonight. Actually, I don't even see the raid. Oh, there it is. Yes. All right, we got a raid with 93. Let's go ahead and kick it off live on video in three, two, and one. Hello and welcome to Blue Box Virtual Greyhawk Con number three, 2023. Uh, the first day has been absolutely outstanding. Thank you very much, Lord Gazumba, uh, not only for all the organization and pulling this together. What a great community, but also for the raid, popping 93 folks in to get us started. And we're going to have a fun time today. I'm joined with a great crew tonight, and we have a fun game plan for you. I uh, want to say thank you to all the folks that have already streamed today. Uh, I got to see some of them uh, kicked off this morning. A really fun game uh, that was played by Phoenixy Wiki, if I'm saying that right. And uh, Robert was in that game at 6 o'clock this morning, Phantom NJ, uh, drinking some coffee. Thank you very much, everyone. Already got a hype train going here. That's awesome. Good way to start. Um, and then uh, I got to, I didn't get to see any of uh, Mike Disney's, but I heard that went well. Uh, and then uh, we had um, a really, really good stream that was done this evening with Anna B. Meyer. Uh, I got to watch some of her cartography uh, stuff. Incredible what she's doing. If you didn't get a chance to watch that, you should go back and watch the VOD of it. Um, Anna was absolutely incredible uh, in that. And so um, really good to have everyone with us tonight. We'll do just a little bit of housekeeping. 
and then we'll get straight into the game. Uh, so thank you. Welcome to all the Mad Chatters, all the virtual Greyhawk Con uh, attendees, and uh, all the support that you've given all day long. Hopefully you have a little bit left in the tank tonight, and you're not already uh, ready for bed, uh, because we're going to have a fun time for the next few hours playing some D&D. &D. And we're going to be right along the Lort Mill Mountains, actually just slightly south of Altamira. And uh, I think you're going to enjoy the way this plays out tonight. Uh, with that said, I want to go around the room, and, uh, or the screen here, and just quickly have you each uh, introduce yourselves. Uh, maybe just give your uh, your name and then anything you'd like us to know if you have any socials uh, or any projects you're working on. And if not, that's fine as well. Let's start off with you, Don. Ah, okay, I am Don. I'm playing Felmorn tonight, uh, a rogue. And uh, what do I got for socials? I don't know, I'm Tails Tavern or Mad Wizard pretty much everywhere on the planet, even at work. Uh, <laughs> even my caller ID has that on it. So. Um, that's pretty much it. I've been playing D&D &D for a few years, but had played it 30, what, years ago? Something like that? What was it? I don't know. Maybe it was longer than that. Now that I think about it. I don't want to think about that. Like 40 years ago. So... Glad to be here. Outstanding. All right, and we won't have you introduce your PCs yet uh, because your PCs will not have met each other yet, so you'll be oh. able to introduce them in the game. Uh, let's go to you, Thomas. You're muted, Thomas? Thomas, you're here. Uh, yeah. Uh, Celtic War 13, uh, pretty much everywhere. Uh, when I post, I try to post more to Instagram, but I, I don't always, I'm not good at it. But yeah, so otherwise, yeah, Celtic War 13, can't wait. Love playing Blue Box uh, Greyhound Cons. Outstanding, thank you. Uh, let's go to you, Cameron. Hi, uh, I'm Cameron, or just playing Cameron over on Instagram and then over on the Blue Box Discord. Uh, I play in the Blue Box Sunday games, streamed every other week with John. Uh, I play Dahlia, just a, a little laugh. Uh, but yeah, that's that's basically it. I'm here, I'm excited. And Dahlia is absolutely awesome, a fan favorite. Uh, let's go to you, Chip. Hi there. Chip, um, or G of Powers, as you'll see me in probably most of your uh, your Twitch streams in BNB, um, the BNB genre. So um, I don't have anything to promote, it's just open and have a fun time and looking forward to gaming with um, John and all our friends here. Outstanding. So thanks all for coming out. Outstanding, very good. And then Greg. Hi, John, thank you for having us. Um, on Twitch, my handle is Justinius. Uh, I'm, I've been playing D&D for most of my life. I'm friends with Carlos Lysing. I play test a lot of his modules, and I've been on some of his streams. And I'm presently running a live first edition campaign using a lot of Carlos's products, along with some of my own homebrewed stuff. Outstanding. Tell Carlos I said hi. Um, all right. Well, let me go ahead and let me set the, the backdrop here as we get ready to start the game. First of all, um, as I mentioned, uh, you don't know each other. You have each traveled independently. And if you look at your screen, uh, your secondary screen, uh, you are here in the uh, southern Lort Mill Mountains, um, right uh, on the edge of the province of Princefield, headed up uh, this road from Thunderstrike on the northern uh, through Riddling Pass. Uh, so you're really headed up uh, through all of the forts that have been bi uh, built uh, south toward all of you independently headed toward the free city of Altamira. Why, you may ask, are you headed toward the free city of Altamira? <laughs> Why, of course, because you know the Grand Joust is coming. And each of you independently are traveling to the free city because it has always been your desire to see the Grand Joust. Uh, some of you, perhaps even Arkin, uh, you know of the legendary paladin of Heronius, Mandaralan Dambaran, who will be jousting this year. Uh, with the name of Heronius scribed across his chest and upon his banners, you long to see him win in glory. Others of you uh, just are coming for coin and the chance perhaps to do a bit of wagering on it. Uh, perhaps some others wish to capture the joust in a bit of art and uh, paint uh, what they see on the scenes. But each of you head north along these lort mills for the purpose of visiting visiting the joust. Interestingly though, there's a little known mining town. In fact, so little known, it did not make it onto Anna B. Meyer's map. Uh, this town is called Verimar. And Verimar uh, sits right next to a mine that's been in operation for about three decades now. And in fact, um, it is fairly well known that this mine has quarried much of the stone which was used to build uh, a, a various forts up and down along the Lortmel Mountains south of Altamira 
and uh, it's a small it's a small mining town where you thought perhaps to uh, refill supplies and get a little bit of rest as you continue your journey north. Um, interestingly, though, as each of you independently travels uh, in the southern road toward the town, you see this uh, neatly organized but uh, somewhat dilapidated town, you know, 30 years mining town. Some of the structures have shown little bit signs of uh, 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 wear and age. And interestingly, you have seen several uh, what look like citizens coming out of the town headed south on wagons, uh, some atop donkeys, um, faces downtrodden, um, talking uh, in, in pensive tones. Uh, it just odd to you as, you as you note this walking into the town. We begin the game tonight uh, with each of you. Uh, as you walk into the town, you see there is a gathering around a center town square, a small wooden platform uh, with worn oaken boards. Uh, it's got some signs and placards up where work is sometimes posted, calls for additional mining aid. Uh, but this day, it is surrounded uh, by several of the townsfolk. Uh, they all seem to be milling around, and there are two men that stand atop the platform. One looks somewhat uh, officious in nature, uh, perhaps some sort of town leader. Uh, he's got a nice leather vest uh, cinched in the middle with a scarf about his neck. It is a chill autumn morning here in the Flaness, and the gentle breeze blows through the town. And as you approach the platform, uh, you take note also of the second individual, which appears appears to be more of a guard uh, who stands next to him with a large pike and uh, there is some sort of a conversation that's happening among the townsfolk. Uh, you, again, uh, you don't really know each other, but you cannot help but take note of one of the individuals that is walking into town now. Uh, there is an enormous 10 foot tall uh, monstrosity of a human. Um, that walks among you, and Tamrak, please describe what they see. <laughs> Tarmac. You, I know you just like the, the Tamrak, but it's Tarmac. Sorry, Tarmac. Uh, you see a hulking half-ogre. He towers above most of you. He is quite muscular on top. Uh, his might be his head might be a little small for when he when he looks to, in his armor because he is bulking split split mail armor, uh, and he is a giant uh, giant mole upon his back uh, that probably is the size of most normal humanoids uh, that he wields, uh, and he has funny splotches on his face like a weird pattern of birthmarks, uh, which we'll be we'll figure out why later. All right, very good. So, you know, you also see other interesting folks, but, but this this uh, massive uh, looks like he might be half ogre in lineage. Um, his jaw uh, broad and set forward, his shoulders hulking, um, and he has a a wide, thick belt strapped around his waist. It has some ornate scribing on it, uh, but as uh, you draw your attention away from him, it's hard not to look in his direction. You hear uh, the man atop the platform begin to intone, Citizens, rest assured we will find an answer to this. Uh, we will discover what has happened to the missing. Uh, we will rescue your loved ones. There is no need yet as to flee the town. Please stay. Trust that we will protect you. We are investigating this even as, to, as of this moment to find out what has become of them. And we know certainly it was an ill portent when we saw Jomin come in town in the state that he was. It is our hope that uh, some of you here uh, among us would be willing to assemble a, 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 a group that will go north, uh, west rather, and investigate what has happened. Perhaps we can find the cause of the disappearance of our loved ones, and it may be something uh, light and easy, perhaps um, just uh, taken a, a bit of uh, ale and gotten a, a bit drunk for two, three, four days now, uh, or perhaps not. Um, and Jarman, uh, perhaps it was a wild beast that uh, uh, costed him on his return. We, we cannot assume the worst. Um, are there... So as he's talking, I'm going to go to you guys. So 
I'm going to let each of you tell me what you're doing as this conversation is happening, what you're, uh, what you're seeing or looking at as the townsfolk are milling around. Um, and you can even role play anything that you see. So I like doing this with my players. If you want to tell me that you're distracted by a scent or you see a, you know, a hawk go overhead and you're, or you're looking at the pouch of one of the, you know, or whatever it is that you want to role play here, as he is speaking from the platform, what are any of you doing? Uh, you see a young half-elven woman, thumb held up towards <laughs> the stage. <laughs> she has a big old portrait. Pulls out a sketch pad, uh, takes out a small paintbrush, and begins to paint the scene before her. Almost as though she's ignoring the content of the speech altogether, as though it was almost irrelevant. Uh, but seems to be beginning to get out the general broad strokes, as it were, of the scene for her. Um, the individual on the platform, which you have kind of heard the mutter uh, of reference to the mayor, uh, you, you gather he's the mayor, uh, he seems to take note. Uh, yeah, young lady, uh, may I ask what you're doing there? Oh, I'm just painting the action. I'm, I'm sensing a story here, okay? Oh, you're, you're painting. Um, if that is all right. You see he kind of turns and strikes a more noble pose. Puts his chin out, gives you his profile. Um, all right, what's everyone else doing? <laughs> uh, Balmorn is uh, a thin, not very tall elf. He's about 5'8", and he is uh, wearing leather armor, but he is heavily cloaked. He's in fact got the hood pulled up. You could talk, it's, If you look at him, it's obvious he really doesn't want to be you know, really noticed. Um, you might see wisps of uh, black hair uh, poking out through the through the cloak, and he does have a, a slight scar on his face. And he's spending most of the time circling the outer edge of the crowd. Um, he's listening to the group. Um, I don't know if it's more than than uh, his you know fr soon to be friend is or not painting it, but he's mostly sort of scouting out the people in the crowd. Uh, looking at them, measuring them, getting a feel for them. Um, might be checking out to see how full their pockets are. Um, yeah, so as you're, as you're looking around, actually, you, you do see, uh, not difficult to note the nervousness on several faces. Um, there is a gentleman uh, who stands sort of at the corner of the platform. He wears a, a heavy woolen cloak. Uh, against the, the the morning chill and occasionally when he turns um his his elbow strikes the edge of that cloak and you see he does have a hefty uh leather pouch uh, that ponder dangles ponderously from his belt and it you're you're getting distracted you're trying to listen to the mayor uh but every once in a while your eyes just keep keep coming back to that pouch oh yeah i would definitely be you know slowly working my way close to him not you know right next to him i don't want to be so blatant but certainly close enough to you know Maybe think about, you know, helping myself a little bit. Okay. All right. As you kind of narrow it, anyone else doing anything, yeah. looking at anything? John? Yes. John, I'm going to step right up, uh, keeping one eye on the half ogre, and I'm going to step up to the gentleman on the platform. This is what seems to be the trouble here, sirs? Um, all of you see um, this very fair looking, uh, difficult to determine exactly. He's clearly not uh, mere human. Uh, describe what they see. Uh, I have long silver hair, uh, golden hue to my skin, uh, over six feet tall, uh, dressed in plate armor with a large two-handed sword strapped to his back, uh, symbol of Hieronius around my neck. Uh, as you step forward, um, the mayor stops. Um, uh, oh, uh, sir, uh, uh, you're a knight. Oh, what good fortune we have. I, I am Mayor Fuller, and um, as you know, uh, we here in Veramar, we support the local town. Many of our denizens work inside the mines. Um, it seems something has gone amiss. Um, we've not heard from them in three days. Uh, the wives have not seen their husbands, um, and one of them, poor Jomin, uh, his horse carried him into town, and, well, he was dead. He laid across 
the mane of his beast, the reins of the animal were gone. His arm had been... He kind of lowers his voice as though to be uh, genteel with uh, the women in the audience and says, his arm had been ripped off as though just simply yanked or plucked from the socket. The tendons were... <gasps> you hear some of the... Well, he, oh, oh, um, it, um, it was most awful. And so um, we're hoping some brave and noble soul, uh, perhaps like you, uh, might be able to help us and find out what's happened to our loved ones. Uh, we would reward you with um, coin and eternal gratitude, um, staying in our tavern, uh, our inn, whenever you wish, and uh, unlimited libations anytime you're in Verimar. I do not require monetary rewards. Oh, well, take anything. Fel Felmore and Pops doesn't even like say anything yet, but his <laughs> eyes open up when they're okay. There's money involved. I'm good. <laughs> Maybe I'll take so his. At the, <laughs> at the mention of that, you guys look back and you'll you'll, you'll hear a bit of commotion as it looks like um, there was a small, looks like a gnome what had climbed up on top of a barrel, peeking up, trying to look around, and um, for those paying attention, saw a white owl land on his head. And he was too busy with the conversation. He tripped and fell off the barrel and said, oh, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> Obviously quite so socially awkward, but very intrigued. He wants to go All right. So, um, sorry, go ahead, Tar Tarmac. At this point, Tarmac lumbers forward. He, he approaches the uh, stage in lumbering strides, and he expects everybody to move out of his way. He doesn't. Uh, say anything. Uh, just expects his footfalls to push everybody out of the way. Uh, and as he looks pretty much at this mayor almost eye to eye, even though he's on the stage, he's like, oh, you need a fight, need fighting. I like libation. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> uh, his eyes go a bit wide. Oh, um, I had no idea you are capable of speech. Um, you are, you are quite the specimen and um, well, well well yes if you're willing to help us uh although i i suppose unlimited libations for you might break the bank um but we need the aid for certain if you're willing we will take your aid uh, assuming uh, the knight is in agreement clearly uh, he should be the leader i look over uh tarmac does he look like he's capable that he can fight Oh yeah, he's in split mail. Like he's in uh, very hardy leathers plated with metal. Uh, his maul is just ginormous with a uh, rune on each side, uh, and his breast, the part of his breastplate is carved with another rune. Uh, yeah, and he looks like he's been in in a few battles before. Uh, he has all the scrapes and, and scratches, and, and his armor is well worn. Let's just say that there's more than a pit and a scar in, in each one. Uh, yeah, and he, he just kind of like laughs. Uh, he'll look down at the knight, kind of slap uh, Arkin on his back. He's like, all right, you're in charge. <laughs> we'll fight right. something and then break a bank. You look like you can uh. fight. Your strength will be most welcome sort of taking a pause, um, giving a, an affirming nod to the piece before tucking <laughs> it over to his side to give it some space to dry. Um, this young half-elven woman sort of steps up, uh, adjusting her sort of uh, thrown to the side hat and choppy blonde hair. Well, if uh, you might be needing a little more aid, I've got some tricks up my sleeve and I'm a bit of a starving artist right now, so. Coin sounds good to me. Uh, and as she kind of hints at this trick, she points and gestures to uh, a bandolier of uh, like paint pigment uh, <laughs> that sit, uh, across the chest. And then the other one that crisscrosses is uh, brushes. They have kind of a like strange sort of like gleam to them, uh, almost unnatural uh, in some way, shape, or form. But uh, she steps up and says, gentlemen, lovely to meet you. The name is M, just M. 
and she uh, kind of presents her hand and says, Charmed on you. I, I, I reach down and, and kiss her hand. As, uh. My lady, we're going into a very dangerous situation. And while I do not mm-hmm. doubt your ability, uh, we need to know whether you can handle yourself in a fight. Mayor Fuller speaks uh, up. Right, right, right. Uh, this could be, um, I, I mean, I'm hoping it's not, but it could be far too dangerous for a lady. Oh, gentlemen, awfully sweet of you to show such concern, but I promise you I can fend for myself. Pats the rapier on her side, but <laughs> seems as though it's maybe run into a couple scrapes. Just a couple, though. <laughs> uh, the mayor yeah. shrugs. She seems eager enough. We can take her. Thank you. Falmorn looks and, and glances again at the, the man with the pouch of gold. <laughs> but then, seeing that there's a good group now, because he's certainly not going to be the first to volunteer for this, um, steps forward a little bit. And I believe I may have some skills that might be able to help out. Um, but you mentioned a uh, monetary reward. I'm just curious if you have a set amount that you've got for this. Um, We are a town that is uh, not wealthy, but certainly not without resources. We have prospered by the mine. Um, I will give uh, each member uh, 100 pieces of gold um, in addition to the guarantees I have made of welcome in our town and uh, staying any time that you wish, and of course the unlimited libations even for the large one among you. Uh, I... I think that is acceptable. I'm fairly sure it'll do. It doesn't sound like it could be. It might not be that dangerous and hopefully relatively profitable. What good fortune we have this day. Do you not see townsfolk? He kind of looks around to his constituents. I, I told you that things would be right and all would be well. I, to what honor do we have uh, to have such distinguished and uh, clearly capable adventurers in our town? Ironius places us where we are most needed. I too am a strong and brave adventurer, and, and uh, Norn will put it in trying to intimidate folks on his dagger at his uh, waist. And seeker of knowledge, I will join you as well. Uh, the mayor, his eyes, uh, his eyebrows go so high they almost touch uh, his his hairline, <laughs> and he looks at you and says, uh, "I could not have such a thing on my conscience, Master Gnome. Um, clearly, uh, we have." Uh, an excellent bookstore here. If you wish to uh, go there and spend your time, um, or uh, we have very small glasses inside the tavern that you could enjoy as well, uh, I would not have your harm upon my head. Clearly, this is far too dangerous. Even the roads themselves, there are rocks much taller than you. Well, I'll tell you what. You haven't seen me in combat yet. I'm normally pretty bookish and i like that i like the library by the way it's beautiful in here i got a library card <laughs> but you mess with me if you lay a finger on my lucky charms you'll see <laughs> what's gonna go down and he puts his hand on a little pouch by his side you see he, he's kind of taken aback and clearly wondering if there's a euphemism inside the reference to your lucky charms <laughs> um <laughs> I, I sir would never think of touching another man's lucky charms, uh, but are, are you certain that this is something you're um, capable of? I look over at, at Norin. You saw that man on that horse with his arm severed? That was a message. That was sent to warn people away. Are you sure you're going to be able to handle yourself in there? I don't want your death on my conscience. Well, I'm going to call. I'm going to call. I'm just going to do a, a quick whistle. Norin does a whistle. And he has a white, a, a barn owl come down and flap his wings in almost menacing, but not really menacing fashion, right in front of the crowd. And then he lands on Norin's head. As Norin raises his hand and throws a fireball up that explodes into the sky. Not an actual fireball, but a burst of flame and says, I can take care of myself, but I thank you for your concern. As you see the, the ball of fire, goes up into the sky and uh, flame coruscates all around uh, the townspeople. Oh, oh, more power, power, he's a mage, he's a mage. Be careful, he could be a witch. <laughs> you daft wench, they're not witches, they're warlocks when they're men. Uh, and so the townsfolk are all talking amongst each other. 
All right. Okay. Uh, well, we'll take them. Well then, um, are there are there any others? Um, a boy of about ten strides up. Uh, he's got a long wooden sword at his hip. I will go, sir. Uh, my father's up there, and I will happily defend and find out what has happened. And uh, the mayor just, no, I'm sorry, Tommen. That cannot be. Um, these are these are seasoned professionals. They are adventurers. Um, you must stay here. Do you promise? And you see his head kind of fall. He looks imploringly over at Arkin, almost hoping that Arkin will take up his cause. I, I uh, walk over to him, uh, John, and I get down on one knee, so I'm eye level with him. And I look him in the eyes and I say, young sir, when you are of age, there'll be plenty of time for adventure. But right now, enjoy your childhood. But, but, we also need folks to stay here in case there's danger from the mines to protect all these fine people. Okay, so when the first words are spoken by Arkin, um, his, his brow knits and he says, Of age? When, when will I be of age? Uh, how, many, how many years do I have to be to be of age? I have an age. I'm ten. <laughs> but then when Norrin speaks up, he kind of looks back. Oh. You need me to protect? Yes. Why, yes. Of course. I will. I promise I will. You'll see. Wise Thank you. words from a mage, young one. You better listen close. And see, uh, from, like, one of the bandoliers pulls out uh, a, an almost too menacing palette knife that you would use for, like, oil paints and kind of spins it towards him, handle out. Uh, and uh, offers it to him as sort of a more uh, dangerous weapon, but not too dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> you see his eyes go wide. Uh, he reaches out with a trembling hand. Are you, are you quite sure? Yes, yeah, you keep him safe now. And kind of like ruffles his hair and then uh, kind of looks to all of you and says, shall we, gentlemen? Shall we away? Uh, as you say this, the mayor looks over. But did you did you get my good side um, on the painting? Did oh, did you get it? You tell me. Uh, and spins it around. It's kind of it's drying. Still a little rough, but the uh, the scene is there. You see all the different parties. You see Tarmac imposing, massive in the corner. You see Norin up on his barrel tottering. Uh, you see a strange, mysterious shadow man in the corner. You see a brilliant hero in plate, and the mayor looking triumphant yet concerned for his village. All right, uh, so, so, so in, your, in your rendering, do you paint him uh, true to form or did you give him a little bit of extra panache? There's a little zhuzh. <laughs> a little yeah, zhuzh. Not too much. Oh, he, he, you see in the background uh, ominous dark clouds beginning to swirl in the direction they are heading. He, he looks down at your painting. That's remarkable. You, you, you captured it perfectly. Um, well, thank okay. you so much. Um, would you perhaps give that to me? For a prize. <laughs> um, well, when you return- I can't work this amazing for free, good sir. Um, when you return from the mine, uh, let's, let's discuss the price, shall we? Um, I would gladly have this piece. Absolutely. All right Absolutely. then. Well, thank you I so much. Uh, he, so he looks at you, and um, the townspeople are all now sort of hopeful. Um, a woman walks over to you, Arkin. Um, she's got deep circles under her eyes, a rough spun brown dress, um, hair pulled back uh, tightly. Not in, uh, you know, a, a comely lass, but clearly um, under deep stress. And she puts one hand on yours. Please find my husband. Um, John is, is, is a good man and always faithful, and we rely upon him. Please bring him home safely. I will look for him, my lady. I will find him or die trying. She nods with this and takes your word for it. In moments, uh, you find yourselves as directed on a path, a track that heads to the west out of the town. Again, for those of you that joined late, uh, let me go quickly and address our audience and also remind our players. Uh, here, 
we have this newly formed group. They are uh, in uh, Altamira, actually just uh, in the southern part of the province of Princefield, heading from Thunderstrike up toward Riddling Pass. Where are they headed, you might ask? Well, of course, where all good citizens are headed now, to the free city of Altamira. Uh, each of them, for different reasons, going to see the Grand Joust, which they know is in but a matter of days. Each of them with different purposes, as I said earlier, some to paint the scene, some to empty some pockets, and others to see Heronius, um, his champion, Mandaralan Dembarin, uh, in part, his power in the joust. And so as they were headed north along this road, they came around the small town of Verimar. So small it's not on Anna B. Meyer's map, uh, but it is the mining town uh, that it, from which stone has been quarried for many of the keeps uh, that dot uh, the area headed up toward the free city of Altamira. Now as you travel on this uh, road west, it's a well-worn trail. You see wagon marks, uh, you see horse uh, trail marks. And uh, as the uh, five of you walk this trail, uh, it's about a two hour walk. So uh, you have this opportunity, if there's anything that you uh, would like to do in terms of preparation or speak among one another, uh, you each walk next to one another along this well-worn path. John, you mentioned before there was wagons and, and uh, people with their items, does this look like an evacuation is taking place? Uh, so that was when you, you realize now, as you were headed north along the road, y yes, some people were leaving the town. Um, not all, but it, clearly some who were concerned uh, about recent events. Um, they have decided to flee. Others have remained. Okay. No, we know this is a, uh, has been a quarry for forts for quite some time. Do we know anything about this mine? What type of mine it is, or yeah, was somebody it, we could ask? Um, you would have enough um, knowledge of the area. It was primarily an ore mine. There were some precious metals uh, which were taken up from the mine, but also um, really, really good uh, stone uh, for masonry. Uh, as I said, a lot of the the granite and harder stones that were used in the construction of the keeps has been quarried here, uh, but also some precious stones. Belmore right. will okay. go ahead. Take bets and... on what we're fighting. Anybody got a gold on a dragon? You think we can uh, kill a dragon? I think you certainly could, big man. And kind of like eyes him for a moment. And like, uh, kind of like sketching him out as they walk. Wow. I don't think I would prefer to fight a dragon. I would prefer this be a little easier walk than that. John, is it is it is it safe to say this mine is the town's welfare as far as income and? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there is some limited commerce that comes from travel. You know, it is on the main road north up toward uh, the free city of Altamira, but without question, the primary commerce of this town would come from uh, the, the mine. Mm -hmm. So a very pleasant uh, morning. Um, you see, even with the chill autumn, uh, there's still liveliness. Uh, you see small animals scurrying through tall grass. Uh, here in this area of the southern Lort Mills, uh, trees uh, are on the on the smaller side, uh, but still nice foliage. Uh, the sky is a brilliant crystalline blue. Uh, the sun hangs yellow uh, about a quarter of the way above the horizon, uh, casting some a little bit of warmth, um, but the wind still carries a, a heavy chill with it. Felmore will walk over uh, to M, and he pulls back his his hood. Um, so once again, showing a, a dark jet black oh. hair and a, a bit of a scar across his cheek, and sort of leans into her. And I see that you uh, sell your uh, wares that you create. I'm curious if you have uh, a knack for that, or if you might be able to use a partner in making sure you can get all you can for them. Now, how do you mean? Also, thank you for finally taking off that hood. My goodness, look at that face. And like, <laughs> give him like two quick taps and then like begin, I like flips the page from Tarmac's uh, portrait to like a blank sheet of paper 
uh, that she didn't have anything to work with before and is now kind of like furiously taking in little details. And, and like he like circle. twitches and almost goes to grab the cloak to pull the hood back over just to not be drawn. Oh um, my, don't be shy. Uh, if we're gonna be business partners, I need uh, a little bit of boldness. I just might have some skills in, you know, making sure that you get full value for your creation. Hmm. Now, what kind of skills are we talking about? I've just done a way with words to make sure that they understand how valuable your time is. Oh, then we are two of a pair. I like this. Let's talk more once we get this job done. Uh, and, like, sticks the hand out very, like, cordially for, uh, for a bit of a business deal. He, he looks at her hand for a split second, and then, and then we'll reach up and, and shake it. It's covered in paint. <laughs> well, you know, he might be a little bit you know, careful with it, but that doesn't bother him too much. Fair, fair. Good. We will speak more. Occasionally you'll see um, the, the white owl flying above, come down and land on um, the head of Norrin, and uh, it seems like they may be communicating of some sort, and you gather potentially scouting on a little bit of the nearby area. And also having some tasty field mice, etc. Yeah, I was going to say, um, as you allow him this rain, he, of course, uh, is extremely adept at identifying small field mouse, rodents, um, occasionally um, pulls quarry. And then where, where does he, does he sit on your shoulder or your head as he rips these creatures apart and eats them? Or what does he do? <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I've asked him not to. But he, <laughs> He's a, yeah, in other words, I don't, I don't really expect the best hair at all points in time. Sometimes there's little entrails that I have to pick out of one curl of lock or another. Okay. Generally right. myself. John, I'm walking in front, trying to keep a lookout as we head down the path for any potential uh, danger. Okay. All right, you continue along the road west. As you do, um, the low footholds uh, begin climbing, um, and uh, the trees grow a little bit larger, uh, the air getting a little bit more chill. And uh, you can see up ahead at the base of the mountain, um, you can even from this distance see there is a small lake that rests at the base of the mountain. And from a quarter mile away, you can see a large, um, pile of rock and rubble uh, that has been pulled from the mine and cast into the uh, into the side of the lake. It sort of cascades down the side of the mining area. Um, and did you get my uh, direct message, Norn? I did. So, so if I could, um, my friend here has got pretty good eyesight, a lot better than myself anyways. Um, we may want to just slow things down, keep a little quiet. There's supposed to be, there may be some sort of an abandoned abandoned mine encampment. We didn't, we didn't see anything crawling around, but you never know what could be hiding in these things. Could be bandits, could be anything. Okay. Speaking of, you gentlemen, any of you know any urban legends, tall tales of this area? I think M is trying to sort of trace back to any sort of, you know, knowledge she might have heard in uh, various uh, taverns or city squares that she had done uh, paintings or portraits in for way less than uh, they were deserved, but uh, <laughs> did the work nonetheless. But I think kind of wants to maybe make like a history check or something akin to that uh, as they walk of like, what are the, uh, what's the lore of this area? Are there any things that, uh, you know, townsfolk would tell their children to scare them at night or something like that? Sure, do, uh, do a knowledge local. Okay. That's an 18, and then if it's plus intelligent, uh, that's plus nothing. Okay, um, well actually, yeah, so you, um, you do recall hearing some tales. Um, there, even this far south, there is rumor of some uh, sort of uh, strange creature that roams not here, but in the quarters of the free city and abducts 
uh, citizens, and you've heard of strange creatures that live in the forests uh, to the east. But here specifically in this area, uh, you recall hearing as a child um, that, you know, the parents would scare their children uh, with the uh, tales of dark elves that would come forth from the mines at night and abscond with disobedient children. Yeah, I think uh, M would sort of uh, sew out that tale and kind of an almost cartoony childish drawing would, you know, draw one such a picture of like a bunch of elves with like children thrown over like a shoulder or something like that. And she would uh, kind of hand wave and, and laugh and say, ah, children's talk, you know, my siblings used to tell me that all the time. <laughs> All right. Uh, as you're uh, coming up the uh, western slope and approaching the mine, uh, let me just mention, I forgot to mention this earlier, we do have some giveaways tonight. Uh, we have two Troll Lord um, gift certificates uh, to give away tonight to uh, our sponsor, Troll Lord Games. Uh, thank you so much to Stephen and Chuck for that. We also have a $25 gift certificate um, to a, uh, a model for 3D print and uh, terrain uh, from, I believe, Infinite Dimensions uh, that Lord Gazumba has donated. And then also today, I'm going to give away uh, one of these blue box laser engraved dice uh, tubes from uh, Ferox Fabrications, one of our sponsors. Uh, you, these are super cool wooden, uh, put a full tube of dice in here and have the blue box logo uh, laser engraved inside the tube. So we'll give that away tonight and we'll do those giveaways during the stream and then maybe one or two at the end as well. Uh, before we uh, resume and get into the uh, meat of what's happening with the mine, uh, we do want to welcome again all of the first-time viewers. We have several of you that are in the chat tonight uh, viewing for the first time, part of Virtual Greyhawk Con. And we have a question that we'd like to ask you. It is part of the tradition here at Blue Box. If you're watching the stream today and you haven't followed, or if you're a follower who has not subbed, or if you're a sub whose sub has expired, we have one question for you here today at Blue Box. What are you doing? Come on, give us a follow, give us a sub. Uh, follows are free. If you got Amazon Prime, subs can be free. Also tonight, be aware, we are using our normal game economy. So if you cheer, uh, anything that you cheer can go to these players. Every 200 bits that's cheered gives one of these players a plus one that they can apply to a combat roll or to, um, to a, a saving throw or to a skill check. Uh, if they get five of those, they can use it for advantage or if they get 10, uh, they can use it for an extra half action, meaning they can get a second set of attacks in a round or a second set of movement in a round, and we'll track all of that during the game today. All right. Uh, as you reach the top of the hill, you see before you um, a small mining encampment, and this mining encampment, hey, thank you so much, Moose. Just tell us, oh, that's for me, outstanding. That's a plus one uh, for the DM, we okay. need that. The audience has turned on us already. <laughs> <laughs> a dagger in the heart. <laughs> we definitely need that. Um, oh, no. No, it's not 5e, actually, Mar so I run modified 5e here. I typically play uh, 3.5 with 1e and 2e elements. Today, we're using 5e for the sake of uh, ease for all the players and to use D&D Beyond, uh, but this is not your normal 5e game. This is definitely a little more hardcore, as the players will soon uncover. Um, as you move toward the, the uh, encampment, you see a, what looks like a stable... Uh, perhaps a barracks. Um, and nothing moves. Um, you do hear the, uh, the braying of a mule um, at some distance away. There are tracks that look like for an ore cart uh, that move through this little encampment. And you can see the entrance to the mine off uh, to your right. Folks, I suggest we search the encampment for any type of map of the mine or schematics or something. Wonderful idea. Wonderful. Lead the way. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go into the camp first, John, in case there's anything in there that... Okay. Um... Could I also begin to ritually cast Detect Magic as we're kind of walking up and, you know, kind of 
cresting into that viewpoint of some buildings. Okay. All right. So, Arkin, you move forward. Uh, you kind of start to investigate the first building, um, even as M uh, uh, gently moves along the tracks, and you hear her mutter an incantation. And M, you begin to sense for the feeling of magic. And you see, she kind of like pours a pigment uh, of like pink powder into her hand and sort of uh, blows it out of her. I'm also going to use my divine sense to try to detect any evil. To detect any what? Evil. Okay. Um, Get him, Arkin. I can do it four times per long rest, so I think this is a good time to try to use it. Perfect, perfect. Thank you very much for the follows. Uh, we appreciate that. So, um, roll d20 for me, Arkin. As you approach the building, uh, just give me your natural roll. 13, unmodified. Un unmodified 13, yeah. Um, as you walk to these doors, um, you note the locks and handles have been removed, and the doors just kind of clack. Um against the wind as the wind blows they they just kind of gently move am well, i sensing morning. anything sorry go ahead am i sensing any evil or you do not sense any evil not even a not even a residue okay well more just to be careful uh sort of walks along the rocks over towards that close tree, sort of keeping it to its back so he can look and see where they're looking um, as he pulls his cloak back up again, activates his cloak velvet kind as he's just trying, sort of hanging back. He, he watches around the tree, make sure nothing is coming. He's very careful to keep track of his surroundings. He's, he's letting uh, Arkin lead the way in. Okay. Um, as you pick your way sort of close to that tree, um, I'll come back to you in a moment. What are, uh, so Nora and I got you, so you uh, also cast an incantation. Um, Hedwig uh, stays very close to you. And um, what are you doing, Tamrak? Tamrak is uh, just trudging right up uh, into like the middle of the area uh, across from uh, Arkin. Uh, and he's just going to stand there and look around. He'll get his uh, maul out and just rest it on his shoulder. Uh, act like he's looking around. And he'll look, but like he's not actually looking for anything particular because he doesn't want to go into any abilities because he'll probably smash through them. <laughs> I can just pick up the whole building, shake it around. <laughs> okay. All right. As you do so. Uh, back to you, Falmore. Um, as you get by the tree, you can now hear uh, or see where the sound of the braying comes from. Um, as you look over, uh, there is a donkey, um, a mule uh, to be more specific, that uh, sits beside a tree. And even as he is um, making sounds, it sounds like he's perhaps injured. Valmord will uh, take note of it. He, he will sort of... Uh look over at uh, Tarmac and just, you know, since he's like really probably much, pretty much like closest thing to him and just sort of over there. But we want to check and keep an eye on what, what's going to happen with him. But, uh, when you guys are ready. Because he's not going by himself. Oh yeah, they, uh, they left a meal for us. <laughs> uh, I think it was a meal. I, donkey's I, not for eating. I think something's happened. Maybe a clue as to what's going on here. Okay. So, what are you doing now? Well, unless oh. otherwise told not to, Tarmac will start uh, making his way towards the donkey. Uh, I'm going to go there with him so he doesn't eat it. <laughs> okay. Um, we eat it. Let's find out what <laughs> if there are dragon claws. I, I want to see what kind of wounds it has. If it's, it's obviously injured, you said. So. All right. As you're doing that, uh, M, what are you doing? As I kind of like walk by this building, am I getting any magical sense from any direction out here thus far? You are not, um, but roll d20 for me, please. Of course. That would be a nine. 
A nine. Um, let me look at your character sheet here. Hang on. Dun, 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 dun. M, just M. The full thing, every time. Uh, okay, yeah. So you actually notice as you walk past the building, something catches your eye. Um, you see laying on the ground uh, look like what might have once been pickaxes, uh, but the heads of the axes have been removed. Interesting. I think kind of like leans down um, and looks to Norin, uh, I think, and just kind of steeples her fingers and goes, Norin, do you make yes. anything of this? I... Uh, and just kind of like gestures to all of it with like, I'm not sure what one would do by making a mess like this, but perhaps your keen mind might have better eyes than mine. Hmm. Well, I can look at these things. I mean, these are very, very rudimentary tool. Um, but maybe I, maybe I can um, figure out what removed these, how they were removed. Is were there they any, broken like, off? Were they um, <laughs> smashed off? Or is it... Okay. I don't know yeah, does this seem sort of like it's bizarre. smash wouldn't and grab? You take, wouldn't you take the whole... Yeah, as you as you move over there, uh, Hedwig, um, you know, lofts off your uh, head every once in a while, puts your hat askew, uh, then comes back and lands on your shoulder. Um, and you go, you, you lean over to investigate, and as you pick up one of the handles, um, you note it's well-worn, obviously seen much use, um, and there are no signs of anything um, violent, just the the head of the hand uh, of the uh, pickaxe has been removed. Someone's collecting ore or metal for a reason. Do I, as I look at it, does it seem as though it's just been like popped off almost, or does it look like it's been shattered or like? Yeah, that's what. So you don't see any. You don't see any signs of trauma to the wood, if you will, beyond the normal trauma the wood have experienced in use as a pickaxe. Um, sure. But there's no evidence of anything here other than that the head has been removed. Hmm. Yes. Someone's, someone's okay. collecting metal for a reason. Wise man, wise man. Both the rust monsters. Well, oh, that's... I hope. As Arkin... Uh, are the, so good. Uh, the rails still intact for the ore cart? Um, as you look down, uh, you note that the rails of the ore cart have also been pulled up. Uh, just leave, just leaving the wood. Oh, wow. Good observation. It didn't. It didn't really. It didn't strike you uh, until a moment ago because you know you don't. You're not really accustomed to seeing these. But now that you're thinking about it, yeah, the rails have all been pulled up as well. Yeah, M M has never been anywhere near this much dirt in her life before. I don't think, and so. <laughs> I think she just kind of gestures to it and goes, this doesn't look like it's supposed to. I'm not claiming I know what it's supposed to look like, but I think, and then just kind of like traces two fingers along where she thinks the tracks ought to be and kind of looks to Arkin. I think some concern starting to grow in her face. Seems like something awful strong must have been uh, picking those up. Arkin, as you're approaching uh, with Tarmac, um, yeah. the small donkey, um, it it sort of shies away and lets out another uh, sound of pain, and it kind of moves closer to the tree. And now that you are uh, with an eye shot, you can see um, a gaping wound in its rear flank. Um, the blood is congealed and drying. The wound is at least, you know, a day old, perhaps, um, and it, it hobbles uh, as it tries to shy away from most likely Tarmac. Uh, I, Tarmac, why don't, you, you're, why don't you stay back? Let me approach the donkey and see if I can find out how it was injured. I'm good with animals. Here, donkey, donkey. <laughs> <laughs> 
John, I've had enough uh, horses shot out from underneath me. Uh, can I tell what type of wound? Uh, is this from an arrow? Is this from a sword? What type uh, uh, yeah, make a heal check, please. As you kind of move closer and you're examining it. Natural 19. Uh, okay, and, well, actually, I don't even need to know what your modifier is. So, yeah, uh, it strikes you uh, clearly, Arkin. This is an unusual wound. Uh, this is not the ragged bite of some predator. Um, it's as though a neat slice has been snatched from the flank of this donkey. The cut is clean. Not, not even the blow of a sword like a clean I uh, I mentioned I, I, the rest wh whoever is nearby if, if uh, M is there I this might have been uh, can we tell if this was a magical wound and I oh, yeah. came towards uh, towards Norin and M this doesn't look yeah, like I, it was done with, doesn't look like it was done with a weapon so maybe it was done was still magically probably have detect magic up potentially yeah you, yeah uh, we'll okay. say your detect magic is still uh, operating you don't sense any magic uh, none at all I'm not does anybody have the ability to speak with animals hmm. no, I'm no I'm much more of an observer of them than I am chatty with them. they don't make great conversationalists most of the time you could be the exception. I'm so sorry. I hope I don't offend. Kind of like talking to the donkey, like offering it like a very hesitant sort of pat. So you've moved over there as well? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, and then what about you, Falmore? Um, as they've all passed the first building, A, he doesn't like to leave a, a building behind that we have. We don't know what's inside. Plus, there could be something good. He will actually sort of back away to that first building and just sort of listen. And if it, you said it was unlocked... Yeah, uh, yeah, the doors are just there. There's no oh. latch on them. Okay, he's just he, he will just very quietly try to like open the door slightly and peek inside. Both both stealthily. So if there's something inside, but also he doesn't really want the group to know if he's looking as well, just in case there's something he might need to pick up. As you peek inside, uh, you see uh, what looks like it must have been a storage uh, area. So um, there are sacks of grain, um, casks of ale, uh, everything inside here seems to be undisturbed. Okay, so nothing that stands out as being of value or of danger. Not, not, from, not from this vantage, no. Okay. Um, at, at that point, he would then uh, turn back around and, and then let them know, I, I think this room is pretty safe back here, and, and then start heading back to them. Um, Okay. Um, as you do this, you um, move past what looks like it might have been a small barracks um, where some might have stayed uh, when they weren't sleeping inside the mine. And now all of you are uh, in eye shot, both of the donkey. You can see um, the stables to the far uh, side on the other side of what looks like the mine entrance. And from here, you can see um, there are what look like signs, um, many of them across uh, the, the post uh, of the mine and down the sides, uh, multitudes of these signs, unreadable from this distance. Um, and everyone is sort of looking at this donkey. Um, it does seem to be very, very uh, uncomfortable with tarmac. Are there it, any saddlebags on the donkey? Nope. I try to calm the animals down using animal handling. Okay, roll. Uh, 13 altogether. A 13 altogether. Um, do you move forward away from tarmac toward the animal, or? I do. Okay. Yeah, as you get closer to it, um, and it does seem to be um, somewhat, it, you noticed it grew less agitated uh, as M got closer as well. Uh, and the further you get from tarmac, the more comfortable uh, it seems, and it allows you to approach. Um, it kind of moves forward gently, hobbling on uh, that bad leg, and nuzzles you. Perhaps it has seen something large, like our friend tarmac. 
Perhaps that was the cause of some of its distress. A reasonable suggestion. It wasn't me. I just got here. <laughs> You've done nothing wrong. Sorry, and like, I think M, M kind of like offers Tarmac a hand of like, you did great. Uh, mm. You've done nothing wrong your whole life. Um, and then kind of like looks to Norin and uh, Arkin. It's just like, very smart. I like you a lot. Okay. Do I see any? Do I make any other? Uh, do I see anything else with the donkey uh, besides the wound? No. Um, you, you do see, as is common with beasts of burden, uh, you can see areas where the fur has been matted and even somewhat worn away, where there were um, saddlebags or you know uh, sacks for movement uh, strapped to it, but no sign of those now. And you said there's some other there's stables, there's some other animals in the stables, or are the stables empty? Uh, you, so from here, you don't see any other animals. Uh, you see one horse outside uh, grazing, seems um, to be paying you no mind, but no sign of the rest of the animals. The donkey's tethered, I'll untether it. Uh, it's not tethered, um, okay. but it's again, it's, it's quite hobbled. So. Beyond this, um, you don't note anything else of significance out here, um, except the yawning mouth of the mine. So you said there was a cut on this donkey. Could it have been done on purpose, like with some sort of, I mean, I have plenty of implements and tools, that type of thing. Could it be like a, uh, done with a small tool or something? Um. Well, you, from this distance, uh, it's easy to see. It could have certainly been done by a tool. Now, it wouldn't necessarily be a small tool. I would say the chunk that's been taken from the haunch um, is about uh, five inches uh, wide at the depth and goes to a narrow point and goes a good uh, nine inches deep into the haunch, probably hit bone, whatever it was, and just like the slice was just yanked out of the haunch. Does it look like there's anything I can do for it medically? Um, I mean, you could obviously, uh, you know, cure light. Um, if you wanted to do any healing, that would apply to an animal as well as to a human. You could just try to apply a healing kit. And you know, as I said, the wound has basically already uh, uh, coagulated. Uh, so there's no current bleeding. Uh, as long as that you can just tell by looking at it, as long as there's no infection that sets in, it will likely live, but always be hobbled. Maybe it's time to move on. Is there, you said the other building, John, was barracks? Uh, yeah, so there's, there's a barracks uh, right next to you on your left, small barracks. Um, there was a supply uh, area that you just left, and then there's the stables. You also notice the barrack door hangs open, the lock and the knob have been removed. There's no foreman's tent or foreman's building. Mm -mm. Uh, I suggest we check the barracks again for a map of the mine or anything to give us a clue as to what's going on. I can do that. I suspect Elmer, we won't find over. any metal. All right, so Falmore, uh, you move over and you investigate uh, the barracks. As you peek in, uh, you see it stacked uh, with uh, several, um, stacked with several uh, <laughs> barracks and benches uh, that um, allow for sleeping quarters and uh, bed rolls, small um, uh, uh, chests for personal belongings and goods, journals, uh, just basic accoutrement. Let me go check. There might be something in here. He'll okay. definitely go and try to rifle through some of the small uh, personal chests to see if there's anything. See if there's a map among what maybe other things that might be useful. Okay. <laughs> um... So you don't find a map, but you do find a small sack of silver coins uh, in at the foot of one of the beds in a small chest. Um, do you take that or leave it? Oh, that might find its way into my pocket. Yeah. Okay, all right, you pocket that. <laughs> uh, it you know it feels hefty. There's probably close to you, you. You you've got a good feel for these things. You'd guess there's at least forty or fifty coins in that sack. Um, 
Uh, at the edge of another bed, you see what looks like a, a journal. Uh, as you open it, uh, it is a journal of one of the dwarven miners. Um, and uh, he is writing of how much he misses his home and his family, um, that he enjoys the work, uh, that he, you know, is, is saving away uh, for the time that he can return home. Um, he makes mention of Herthus, uh, H-E-R-T-U-S. Herthus is the, um, uh, the, the supply master uh, that has provided uh, him some extra food at times and extra supplies. He speaks of him fondly. Um, other than that, you just find various knickknacks. Okay, I, I will make note of that. In fact, I, I will uh, take the book with me so I've got the words. Um, make sure there's nothing in the last entries that I need to worry about because that's always been the ones that would have something of something dangerous appear and get written up. Um, and then come back out and say, you know, let them know. I, I did not find a map. I didn't find a, a, a journal. And, and it might be helpful, so I brought that. If you wouldn't mind, if 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 you, if you wouldn't mind, I would wouldn't mind checking that out. Uh, here. Tell me if there's any gossip in there. <laughs> he'll he'll hand it off, and it it seems pretty boring stuff. But you're welcome to look at it. He What's hands it off the him. drums? The drums in the deep. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Arkin, uh, do you look at the journal as well? I'll I'll take a glance at it. But... Uh, I'm already starting to eyeball the entrance to the mine. Ah, interesting. So, as you take a glance at it, um, you are you are almost dismissive of it. And what does someone do when they're sort of dismissive, or if it's already been checked, they'll typically maybe look at the front or just kind of flip to the back and just you flip to the back and the last page. Um, there's several blank pages, but the last written page, um, you read an entry that references um, an earthquake that occurred three days ago uh, from his entry. You don't know how long ago that entry was. It's not dated. Um, and that um, some of the mine shafts collapsed and they lost three men. Uh, huh. Maybe they dug too deep. <laughs> Cause an earthquake or a cave. It says earthquake, not cave in. It says earthquake. Earthquake. That's not good. That's worse. Hmm. Well, All right. at least we know that a map might not help us because what was once there might not be there anymore. That's true. <laughs> if there's, That's if we, yeah. Let's go find out. Uh, we, if we've, first. Explored, we've explored all the buildings, John. If there's nothing else out here, then we'll That's head towards the mine. Okay. Um, as you move closer uh, to the entrance of the mine, uh, you can get a better look at those uh, signposts uh, that adorn. And what you note is, uh, now that you're closer, they're actually names. Um, they're names with beginning and ending years. And it takes you just a few moments to realize uh, these are the recorded names of the miners who have died here. Um, you count, you're just kind of looking at it, there's at least four dozen. Uh, names here that adorn the edges of this mine. I take a knee and give them a minute of a, a moment of respect before I enter the mine. Okay. Anyone else doing I'm anything? Kind of walking up to this way, the horses are just like chilling. They're not running away. They're not scared. They're just hanging out. As I said, you only see the, the one mule and there is one horse, and that one horse is unsaddled, and it seems to be uh, uninjured and paying you no mind. It's just grazing. All right. Good to know. And these, so there are railings for mine carts, et cetera. Uh-huh. Theoretically would have been here, but are gone now. Correct. I really hope it's not a rust monster. <laughs> the audience has got all kinds of fun suggestions for what should be in here. Oh, the mad chatters are good at that. Uh, I like the Balrog. Like Balrog. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I didn't notice, Were there? did any of the others receive a plus one, or am I the only one that has one so far? Oh, don't brag. I think I'm the only uh, one, no. so sorry, guys. Uh, all right. You're the only one. Uh, the yawning um, portal of the mine 
uh, sits ahead, uh, moving into darkness. Even from here, you can feel a cool breeze coming from the mine. Uh, it carries with it uh, the scent of dry stone, um, bat guano, and urine. Lovely. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I believe everybody here has dark vision, do they not? Uh, yes. I do. Yes. I do as well. Great. So we don't need to light torches or anything. I think we can... It won't be easily observed. I do not. Not unless you're feeling a nope. little afraid, nope. Arthur. The half ogre, half ogre doesn't have dark vision? Big boy kid. Oh, no. Well, I'm using Goliath's stats. So I don't know if, if a half no. a half ogre would. Normally. But uh, Goliaths do not have dark vision. Well, Wait, John. Uh, uh, hang on here. Let me let me double check that in. Let's go back to first edition rules. Dave. Yeah, half ogre. We're gonna do that's okay. We'll e. let you carry the torch. You could be the target. Uh, here, <laughs> let's see. I believe they do. Let me see here. Yep, they have dark vision. Yep. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna take the first step into the mine, John. And All right. Uh, you step into the mine and you see Arkin uh, vanish into the darkness. Um, who goes next? Tarmac. Tarmac. Uh, as you get there, you see you almost fill the width uh, of this. Um, it, it is fairly tall, so you don't have to uh, bend down, uh, but there is scant distance around your shoulders as you move through. Hey, thank you, Varlby Gem. That's a plus one for each of you uh, for as players, so make sure you track those. Uh, all right, and then who who, who follows behind Varmac? Um, I will go behind. All right, so, so Fallman goes next. All right, and then after him? It's up to you, M. M, do you want to be Bring four? Down. I'll go either, either way. I can go. Norris, how about you? Next or last? How about you go in front of me? All right, so M uh, will take the back. Doran, is your owl going to be able to enter the mine, or do you want to have your owl stay outside and keep an eye out for anybody coming in after us? Well, that's kind of why I'm in, in back. Because uh, he's pretty good at scouting around in there if we needed it, if it opens up a bit. Um, but he can join us. OK. I'm, I believe we also can see pretty well in the dark. All right. Then... Would I be able to, again, kind of as we're walking, ritually cast Detect Magic as we kind of take our first steps in? Sure. So you once again uh, concentrate a moment and... You cast your Detect Magic as Tarmac scrapes uh, his shoulders uh, through on the way in. And even in here, uh, you see the tracks have been pulled up uh, and only the wood remains. All the metal seems to have been removed from this area. And as you come walking in, um, everything grows uh, dark. You adjust with your dark vision. Let me put on my night lighting here. You adjust with your dark vision um, and as you uh, peer through, you see these rough-hewn walls. Uh, clearly, this is the area of the mine um, that was excavated. Um, this looks like the oldest part of the mine, having been the first part which was excavated. And um, as, as you walk in, you can hear your footsteps echoing, um, but there is, there is not else of sound, uh, and it's very eerie being inside this mine. Only one way to go, right? That's correct. It's a single shaft. Felborn, as he walks, will we'll obviously be watching ahead, but he's always got his head on a swivel, checking the sides, checking behind. All right. Um, as you are moving deeper into the mine, uh, the air grows cool uh, even more so, and uh, certainly... Um, echoes uh, which come from deeper inside the mine uh, add a their own kind of chill um, you move forward 
and as you approach what looks like an intersection, uh, you see there is a passageway to the left, a passageway uh, forward, and a set of doors uh, to your right. Uh, large stone doors. Here the ceiling is almost 15 feet high. It's been excavated uh, quite high inside the mine. And the stone doors are closed. said large doors, double doors? Uh-huh, large stone double doors. Uh, any, like, inlays for handles that should be there that aren't now, or are they, like, don't make No, in fact, it looks like these doors should just push open. Hmm. Okay. Uh, John, I'm not a miner, but it seems to me that these doors were uncovered. I mean, nobody, the miners didn't come down here and install giant stone double doors. These, they must have dug this out and found this. Does that look to be the case from just observation? Um, go ahead and roll uh, knowledge um, dungeoneering. I don't think I have that. Well, just, just, just yeah, give me a d20. I'll, I'm, I'm working off of uh, 3.5 stats. I'll, I'll translate it for you. Well, I rolled a one, so I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> you um, are convinced um, these are likely ancient artifacts from a long dead race. Okay. If you know my style of game, by the you have to you have to play it though. My style of game, when you roll like a one on something like that, it's not just a failure. Uh, you are going to presume something which is inaccurate. Ancient okay. <laughs> artifacts from a long dead but, race. <laughs> I, I let, me have, let me have a look. Let me have a look. Go ahead. I fought in the Blood Wars, and this is definitely a portal to another dimension, either in the lower plains or <laughs> elsewhere. You are a wise man, Arkin. <laughs> Just kind of nods, and it's like, yeah, sure. Oh, Why yeah. not? So do I open them? I could push them open. Whoever said Balrog is accurate. <laughs> so, Arkin, are you going to, in, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Norn, are you going to investigate the doors? Yeah, I'm going to do a quick investigation. All right, uh, go ahead and roll d20. And as you're doing this, um, Holy cow, it is a, it is an, a long uh, dead race. <laughs> <laughs> Did you roll a one also? Yes, sir, right, you have to be very, very wise. Very. Brilliant, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, because I failed so miserably, I'm now going to use detect evil. Use my second divine sense. <laughs> I'm convinced there is a demonic portal behind the door. I'll prepare my fireball. Any, is there any magical sense to the door? Um, you don't sense any magic at the door, but as you're standing here, um, you actually hear there are muted voices. Uh, you can hear someone's talking behind the doors. Do I, can I pick up any language? Um, as you get closer, um, who's going close to the doors? I want to make sure I have everyone in the correct position here. So if you look at your... Since I'm detecting evil behind them. All right, right. So, so you're sort of standing right here at the crossroads of the tracks. Fedwig is examining the door, or Norris is examining the doors, Norin, rather, uh, with Hedwig beside him. Now... Um, we have M, who's also gotten closer, and she's listening for the language. What are you doing, uh, tap Tarmac? Uh, I'm probably standing near our god, because uh, I just asked if, if they want me just to go ahead and open the doors. He's not paying attention to this. He's like, so do I open them, or do I not open them? And while they're looking at the doors, Felmorn will stay near, you know, Archon and, and Tarmac. Uh, but he's actually still keeping an eye out on the two ways they have, they're not looking at, uh, just to make sure there's nothing, you know, comes that way. Figuring that, you know, the rest of the group is there to be buffer in case something comes out the big doors. As you look to the left, um, you can see it looks like the left has caved in, uh, perhaps as part of that recent earthquake. Roll d20. And uh, full disclosure, John, my detect evil does not go through a foot of stone. Right. 
Uh, 15. Um. Okay. All right. Um, and then as you look to the north, uh, or you know, further down the straight direction that you would go, um, it goes down about 40 feet or so, and then kilts right where you can't see what's beyond that. Okay. M, as you're listening, um, it sounds like dwarvish is being spoken. Um, low, guttural voice. Could I make maybe like an insight check to see like, does it sound lively? Do they sound distressed? Do yeah, go ahead and roll. Like okay and comfortable. Go ahead and make a roll. That is a 19 on the dice. And I have a plus two to insight. Okay. Um, yeah, it's pretty clear to you that, you know, there's nothing excited or excitable in the tone, but it does sound like an effort is being made to keep voices low, as though um, there is a, a furtiveness uh, to the communication. Um, I think M would start to take some steps, steps back to Falmorn and would uh, kind of lean over uh, and whisper, did you, there didn't happen to be a name on that sure. was there? Um, I saw one name in there, uh, uh, Herthus. Herthus. Mm. But that's the only one that I saw mentioned. Interesting. Well, I sure do hope we can find Herthus in here. Says it, uh, like, projects just a bit louder as she says that. You tell us, Em, that there's dwarven voices behind the door? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think she'd, like, point twice, put up an ear, uh, and, like, tilt her head that way. She also can't speak dwarven, so she doesn't know uh, what they're saying. John, were there any dwarves in town? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was It was a mixed-race town. Okay. All right. So it wouldn't be unusual to have dwarven no. here. No. Mm-hmm. Not at all. Bear with me. If, 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 if you want to mind me, I've dabbled a little bit in the dwarvish tongue. Um, if that's what you think you hear, I'll trust you. Even though none of you really trust my opinion. Um, can I hear anything? Can I um, discern any words or anything at all? Um, so you get closer. closer. All right. You kind of put your uh, ear uh, to the crack between the double doors. Um, the double doors of the ancient lost race. <laughs> and uh, as you listen, you find an ancient race. Um, you, uh, you can make out uh, sort of every other word. Uh, they seem to be talking about uh, other miners. Um, you hear the word missing. You hear the word demons. You make that out. Whether literal or figurative, you're not certain, but yes. Um, I'll come back and relay this to the group. It seems like these uh, these are probably the good guys. All right, let's open the door then. He'll start making his way to the door. Thung, thung, thung. As, as Tamrak uh, makes this loud proclamation and thunks toward the door, uh, you push on the door uh, and your voice echoes. As your voice echoes down uh, the chamber walls, uh, there is sort of an eerie stillness that comes and just the sound of the wind. The m- muted voices inside grow quiet. And then you hear coming from all around you a chittering sound. And as you look, you see small shadows against the walls, a multitude of creatures, um, some coming from the passage straight ahead of you, some coming from that caved in area behind you. And as they approach, they stop. You count eight of them 
four coming from straight ahead, four coming from the passage to the west, each of them standing two, two and a half feet tall. Um, they have segmented overlapping plates of armor. Um, they have feathery antenna uh, that point up and oh, no. large pincers, uh, chitinous plates that sweep down the bulky bodies and they just, they simply stop and stare at you. I'll show you what they look like here if you'll direct your attention to the screen. I accidentally gave a preview earlier. Yes. Um, they stand around the antenna pointed up Russell and monsters. there would be some among you that would know what these are. Um, they're larger than those you have seen before and you've never seen them operate in the way they seem to be here coordinated and they all stop. And then as they're looking at you, the antenna begin to twitch and the quiet of these mining area, this mining area is shattered by a thunderous rattling hum as these creatures begin to vibrate their chitinous plates against one another. The segmented plates make this enormously uh, annoying sound that then reverberates and echoes back and forth until it reaches this droning pitch of of incredible uh, distraction that, that, that pulls through the entire mine, and then they stop. The antenna twitch. Oh. And then, in unison, they attack. Initiative. So here at Blue Box, we roll a D6 for initiative. Um, as the creatures come uh, swarming towards you, and you're gonna pick one member of the party to roll. If you win initiative, you will keep rolling until you lose initiative. If we tie, we both roll again. All right, I'm gonna pull up the large screen here so you can see, and I've got my, yeah, so hold on, let me move some of these. Uh, there, that goes there, that goes there. Hang on one second, that goes up there. Now I've got everybody in the right spot. Okay, uh, DM has on the die. Ooh, starting the night out right, a six on the die. What do you have? Oh, you know, I say I Emerald. Emerald. Emerald's been rolling well. Yeah, let that roll. Okay. Oh, me. That's a four. A four, all right. Uh, Not great. The creatures catch you by surprise. Uh, as they come rushing forward, uh, two of them come straight toward Arkin. Two of them come straight toward M uh, from the straight ahead passage. And then uh, from the opposite side, uh, two of them go straight toward uh, Falmore. And the other two are coming around the side, uh, aiming to, to get to Norin and to Tamrak. Uh, so let's start uh, with the two that are assaulting Arkin. As they come towards you, uh, you see those pincers uh, trying to bite, uh, but those feathery antenna are definitely what have your attention. Yeah. And sure. as it attacks, uh, remind me of your armor class. Uh, 18. Uh, M, get your paintbrush ready. I'm about to be naked in about 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, all right. So a, that portrait's gonna cost extra, but <laughs> eighteen. I'm gonna save my plus one for the moment. Um, you have to declare that before you roll, John. What's that? The plus one. Do you add that afterwards? You have to declare. It you have to declare it before you roll. Yes, and I'm not using it. Um, okay. Uh, it's it's uh, pincers scrape. <laughs> along the metal of your armor uh, even as the feathers touch the armor. Now, uh, your armor, uh, let me look at it here actually. I want to make sure I know what this is. Uh, here we go. Da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. And going to your items. Your precious plate mail. I knew I should have taken a spare set of armor. <laughs> <laughs> Deleted it off the character sheet. So I don't need to uh, all right, so your plate is non-magical, correct? 
It is, that is correct. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. I need you to roll. Um, you're going to roll for your plate armor. This is going to be a DC. Wait. Uh, da 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 da. So as the antenna move toward, they try to, to, to sort of gently caress your armor, this first creature. I need you to make a uh, uh, reflex save. So roll um, roll a d20 and add your dexterity bonus. Uh, that's only a nine altogether, so. All right. Um, as it brushes, you feel the corrosion uh, that hits right uh, at the the center of the chest plate, kind of at the base of the uh, where your uh, your midsection is. Your armor is now minus one, so drop your armor class by one uh, from where it was, um, and you can feel the armor weakened. Uh, the second creature attacks you as well with the bite. Like I'd rather take damage. That is a hit. Yes, you would rather take damage. Uh, that is a hit. Uh, this one actually almost in coordination. And again, you know these creatures should not be able to coordinate in this fashion. It strikes with pincers right behind where the other one brushed uh, those antenna across, pincing through the weakened armor. And you take, ouch, eight points of damage. You feel the pincers squeeze into your side, blood wells, uh, and begins to warm as it goes down the leg of your plate armor. Now we go to the uh, two that are approaching M. Um, M, as they scrabble towards you, um, the first one bites. What is your armor class? My armor class is a 16. All right, you easily dodge the first one uh, with your nimble feet. Um, the second one is a hit. Now on your, uh, so for the second one, as it bites, the pincers grab your uh, grab your calf. Ouch, golly, the dice are hot tonight. You take nine points of damage as the pincers sink into your calf, it yanks. Uh, you almost lose your balance. Um, are you wearing metal armor? I'm wearing studded leather. You're wearing studded leather, so your leather has studs. The studs would be metal, uh, so it is going to, the, it's going to brush those. I need you to make two of those uh, saving throws. It's going to be a DC 11. You're going to add your dexterity bonus to it. So roll a D20, add your dex bonus. Um, that is a 15, and my dex bonus is a 3. Okay, so, and then roll the second time. Got it. That is a 14 plus three. Okay, so uh, both times you you saw what was happening with Arkin. You dodge away as those antenna try to touch uh, your armor and you manage to avoid any damage to it. Now we go uh, to the two that are on uh, Falmor. All right, Falmor, uh, your armor class? Uh, armor class is 16, also wearing studded leather. Okay. Um, that's a miss. You bat the first one away. That is a hit on the second, following the same pattern. You take five points of damage. Um, pincers slice right at your hip, uh, just below your belt, scissoring right through. Uh, you see blood just well up and begin to pour down your leg as well. And then I need you to make those uh, DC 11 saving throws with your dex bonus. Just Two of them. Right. Yep. Two of them? Yep, and while you're doing that, I'm gonna roll for the hits on Tarmac. Total of 17 and 20, so. All right, so you managed to avoid those as well. Tarmac, your armor class? Uh, 17. All right, uh, first one is a hit this time. Second one just misses. Uh, you take from a bite, uh, catches you, wow, well, not, not much. Um, as it, it bites through, you've got protective armor on your shin. It manages to just kind of squeeze around it. You take two points of damage from the bite. I need you to make those two DC 11 saving throws now. First one is a big old fail with a one, and the second one is also, it is 11. All right, so on the one, your split mail has now dropped one in armor class. So drop your armor class by one point. Now we go to the party. Uh, let's start with you, Arkin. Okay, I get two attacks. So I roll one at a time, or both Thank you very much. I'm sorry, what was that? I have two attacks, so I roll yes. one at a time. Uh-huh. Uh, 
Well, I rolled a one with the first attack. Oh no! You rolled a one on the first attack? Yes, sir. Let me turn that music down. It's a little loud for me. Um, all right, so thanks. So each one of you gets a plus one. All right, so now what you do is you roll again. We're going to confirm whether or not you have fumbled. We don't call them critical fails here. We call them fumbles. Uh, so roll that d20, and uh, you ha if, you, if your second roll is a miss, it doesn't have to be a one. It just has to be a, a miss. That will confirm a fumble. Well, it's only an 11 altogether. So it's an 11 altogether, and the armor class... On this guy is okay. That is a fumble. Whoa! Arkin's very first attack is a fumble. All right. That's, a, that's classic. This is not for going me, well. <laughs> yeah, you guys are off to a fantastic start here tonight. All right, go ahead and roll your second attack while I'm checking this. That second attack is a 23. Cool. All right, great. Thank you very much, Josh. Uh, all right, so that's a hit. Go ahead and roll your damage on the second one while I tell you what happened on the first one. And uh, this this proves I'm almost as old as these fumble tables. Uh, the writing is so small, I'm going to have to pull out my glasses to read them. Uh, that's embarrassing. All right, so uh, roll, I need you to roll percentile dice uh, as you're rolling your damage as well. Uh, I'll do 14 on the second attack. 14 damage? Yes. Okay, nice. Um, uh, 35 on the percentile. All right, 35. Uh, all right, so... I'll Because I did this, and I let you roll the second, I'll let you keep it. We'll reverse the order of it just... Um, as you swing... Um, you strike the first time, you come around the second time, and uh, you have such fervor in your swing, uh, the blood that is welled up in your side. Um, the first time this has happened to you in a long time, uh, your weapon followed through too strong, you strike the stone wall next to you, and you dislodge your weapon from your hand. You hear the the disheartening clatter of your blade as it lands on the other side of these creatures and rests on the ground. The, but you did wound that one uh, significantly. It looks badly hurt. Now we go to you, Falmorn. Falmorn, uh, not the hero in the group, uh, but he will uh, quickly grab his rapier and uh, being a rogue, he will use his uh, bonus action to disengage just slightly to rotate around the uh, the rust mouse, the, 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 I don't know how to say it, the one on my right, I guess. It's the one that's on uh -huh. the there. Right. Um, intentionally, so he moves steps away just from the from the one that's next to uh, Arkin, and then he will, he will swing his blade around, trying to hit it, um, but since he's a swashbuckler, if he hits, he'll get a sneak attack still. So let's see what we get here. That is an 18 plus nine, so a 27 to hit. That is a hit. Okay, so that's D8 uh, plus six plus three D6 for his sneak attack. So let's see what we got. All right, roll that. And yes, Varlby Gem, uh, you are my kind of viewer. You recognize the Merp crit tables from there. I'm actually using the fumble part of that. I have my own custom crit tables, uh, but I use the uh, Merp fumbles because they're better than the fumble tables from the ever mysterious Tim. Uh, all right, your second attack. Okay, so that, I only get one attack, but it's did it 20 points of damage. Um, okay. And then as a swashbuckler, uh, since I can back away without getting the opportunity attack, um, he will dash backward to stand next to his big friend back there. All right, so you don't provoke an attack of opportunity with that, correct? Correct. I will not because I have a swashbuckler and I attacked that one. You're right. Okay, so you, you then you dash back away, and uh, you see that 20 points of damage, uh, heavy damage. The creature is bleeding profusely but still comes on towards you. Uh, now we go to you, M. Um, okay, so if you'll allow it, can I use a bonus action before an action? Yes. Um, so... M does something sort of strange. Um, you see she kind of pulls a paintbrush, grabs some pigment, and then kind of runs her brush through it. Uh, and on Falmor, Tarmac, and Arkins, like almost near your ear, is sort of an effervescent uh, watercolor flower that sits with you for a moment. Um, and I'm going to use, um, where are you? 
gotta find it in the uh, little thing. I'm gonna use something called Mantle of Inspiration, which as a bonus action, you can spend a use of Bardic Inspiration to grant eight temporary hit points. Um, oh, I can actually do it to four people, so I'll uh, do it to uh, Norin as well. Uh, and you can now also move up to your speed without provoking um, an opportunity attack. Wow, very nice. Uh, so as you release this, you all feel uh, healing uh, that comes upon you. And this healing power gives you, is it 1d8 or just 8? You all get eight temporary hit points. So these can be added to your, if you're undamaged, those can go over uh, your damage to, or your normal maximum. If you are damaged, uh, they go against that, but then when the spell ends, they drop back down. What's the duration of the spell? Uh, it is, I think, what is it? Like an hour or something? I, it's complicated. I'll look it up and make Yeah, look, look it up and, and let me know when we get to that point. All right, now let's go to uh, Tarmac. Uh, can I take my action? Oh, yes, I'm sorry, go ahead, yes. It's wild. It shouldn't be a bonus action, but it is. It's fantastic. Um, and, uh, would the gentleman sort of, where would you all be moving on the battlefield? So as you can see here on the, uh, if you look at your screen on the Tailspire map, Tarmac is turning around, Falmorn is running sort of behind him. Um, okay. you, you, you see Norin is still by the door, so he's turning around uh, with Hedwig clutching to him, and Arkin is standing right in front of you. Okay, um, I think kind of aiming out her hand, she'll again pull out um, now several just uh, big bottles of paint and just start throwing them at the grouping of four that's kind of, I suppose, to the left of Arkin. Yeah, uh -huh. And going to cast Hypnotic Pattern. Ooh, okay. Uh... So that's a Wisdom Save DC 50. All right. Um... And these creatures, though they do have antenna, they also have eyes, so they are uh, susceptible to this. And so I'll roll for each of them. That's nice. What a great spell. Um, one, two, three. Well then, uh, and I'm glad I didn't waste my plus one. It wouldn't help. All four of them fail that save. Um, so tell me the effect that that creates. Um, so you kind of watch as the swirling, like, miasma of paint uh, kind of swirl in the air and then kind of fall onto the eyes of these creatures. And they are uh, incapacitated and have a speed of zero. Uh, for how long? Uh, that would be spell ends for the affected creature if it takes any damage or for someone else uses the action to take the creature out of its stupor. Okay, which the rest of your party would not know, so we won't metagame this. We will just assume that everyone continues to attack as they would have. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that up real quick here and just make sure I am correct in how I'm adjudicating this. One second. Reminder to all of our viewers, we have some giveaways coming here. We'll start with our first one in just a moment from Troll Lord Games. Uh, and I want to say thank you to all of our viewers for all your participation in uh, Virtual Greyhawk Con. It has been a busy, busy day. Uh, this party was just an innocent group of uh, folks looking to travel to the free city of Altamira to watch the Grand Joust and uh, have found themselves in a very difficult situation just trying to be helpful. Uh, that is often the way it works with adventurers. Um, da -da -da -da. Okay, yeah, that works. Uh, so with your hypnotic pattern, 30-foot cube on a failed save becomes charm for the duration. Incapacitate, so zero, zero spell. And, all right, got it. All right, so all four of them, they just they stop uh, right where they were. All right, Tamrak, Tarmac. Uh, um, curious, because the map shows only the six around us and two behind us. Are we actually saying there's eight around us? Yes, there are eight of them. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering how the two got to me. If they, if those two were uh, the two closest there. Were yeah, so we didn't, we didn't move the minis. What was supposed to have happened? These two actually came through here. These were the two. That was just my mistake with the minis. Uh, so you've got these two that came through here. These were the two that were uh, engaged. This one was the one injured by Falmorn. Yeah. All right, and I don't know if it matters, but I have adamantine plate uh, split. 
Okay. Uh, it, it's it's still stone. It's still uh, metal. Still subject to this. And in fact, um, well, we haven't gotten to that point yet. But as I mentioned, these are slightly larger and uh, clearly a different variant uh, than your standard rust monster. Uh, then he will grab his maul and he's going to swing at the closest one to him. Just get his maul. Just oh. all right. Roll to hit. Uh, I, before I roll, I'm uh, going to use my great weapons master. So it adds damage, but I take a, a negative five to the uh, technical. Okay. So that's a twelve to hit. A twelve to hit. Uh, that's a total. Yes. You swing your maul down. Uh, the creature skitters away. Your maul strikes the ground. Chips of stone come off the floor and it reverberates through your arms. All right. Well, I'll do the same thing again for my second attack. Well, that's an 18 to hit. That is a hit. Give 15 damage. Nope, 21 damage. What's that? How much? What? 21. 21 damage. Oh, wow. Okay. A massive blow. Uh, this one, you squish. You see uh, some of its innards splurt out the side, uh, but it's, it still skitters uh, two of its legs not working, but it remains. Let's now go to you, Norin. Uh, call me a witch, will they? I'll show them. He reaches into a pouch on the side here and pulls out a telescoping broom and jumps on it and just starts flying up to the ceiling over the uh, rust monsters. Okay, all right, and so and so you do. So you all see suddenly Norin uh, floats. How high do you go? It's about a 15-foot ceiling here. You're three feet tall, so do you want to go where your head is just sort of against the ceiling? Basically. All right, uh, you do so. Do you stay there or do you move? Um, I'm gonna. My plan is to is to go hover over the uh, the enemies. All right. So you kind of hover directly over uh, a little bit to the side, so as not to be in the sweep of any. Th well, of course, Arkin doesn't have a blade at the moment, but should he produce another one from somewhere, yeah. uh, you would be yeah, out yeah. of range of it. A little, a little bit past him too. Just to uh, okay. Keep an eye on what's what's around. All right. You go a little bit past him, and as you uh, float past, uh, that concludes. Everyone went this round, correct? Did I miss anyone? Nope. Okay. Initiative, and you lost last time, Cameron. So we're going to rotate to you, Thomas. D6, and the DM has. Oh, I went the opposite opposite direction. I have a one on the die this time. I also have oh a one. God. Okay, we oh. roll again. <laughs> DM has a three on the die this time. Come on. I have a one again. Okay, they have initiative. Unfortunately for the DM, these four just simply sit there entranced, mesmerized by the, uh, the kaleidoscope of color uh, that they're seeing from the paints that M threw. Uh, these two, <laughs> these two, which were trying to engage Falmorn, now engage Arkin, and uh, because Falmorn has retreated behind the big guy, and they attack. Uh, the first one, that is a miss, scraping your armor. Ooh, the second one. I don't like that you rolled again. <laughs> well, so you, if you pick up the clue, you know I told you before I don't use these for crits. I only use them for fumbles. So yeah, this this one fumbled. Um, oh. oh, even better. Uh, so probably uh, slipping on your blood uh, would be my guess. Uh, that's a good guess. Makes sex. Uh, that's sound effect for yeah. Uh, all right, yeah, the creature actually uh, slips, not only on the blood, but on the gore that split out from the side of the creature that was partially squished by uh, Tarmac, and it loses its attack that round. So you don't even have to make the save on your armor, uh, but for the, this other one, uh, the one that missed you but did not fumble, those antenna come out, make that DC 11 save. Reflex, so dex. Oh my god, missed it by one. 
10 altogether. All right, another minus one to your armor class. You feel the armor weakening further. Um, and you just, you you can tell there's a sense that a certain amount of this, the structure of the armor will disintegrate entirely. Um, it is get your, your, your gorgeous plate is weakening with each blow. Uh, the two that are on, uh, one goes toward uh, now uh, Tarmac and the other goes toward M. Uh, M, the one that attacks you, Mm -hmm. That is a hit. Uh, you feel a bite from behind. Uh, it catches you in the hamstring, uh, but you you see it just as it's getting close. You kind of lift your leg to get out of the way. It snips just at your hamstring. You take two hit points of damage. Um, now make that DC 11 save. Now I'm going to roll while she's doing that. Uh, I'm going to roll for the attack on Tarmac. That is a hit. All right. My dice are hot tonight. But again, the one on the damage die. One plus one. Uh, Tamarack, they're snipping at you, but you've got thick plates uh, on your uh, on your legs. You only take two points of damage. What was your saving throw, Cameron? Twelve total. Okay. You again. You're nimble. You're quick. You're, you're dodging those antenna. Uh, your roll? Tarmac? 19. 19, all right. Uh, you, you just kind of bat the antenna away. Now we go to the party. Let's start with you, Arkin. What are you doing? Uh, I seem to uh, recall the bard cast a spell that allows me to move without provoking attacks of opportunity. Is that correct? Yes, that was the bonus action. Okay, so uh, can I retrieve my sword then without uh, drawing an attack of opportunity, John? Yeah, so... The, um, you're going to kind of half jump, half slip between these creatures uh, to retrieve your blade, and that's going to be a full round action for you to get over there, pick up your blade, and rearm yourself. Uh, now we're going to go to... Oh. Sorry, go ahead. No, I, I thought the spell also increased our movement. Did it increase movement? It, basically what happens is it gives you the eight temporary hit points and then allows you to move your movement speed oh. without provoking uh, opportunity attacks. Yeah, okay. yeah. And technically, the way the fumble was written, um, you would it would take two rounds for you to recover your blade. But I'm going to say because these creatures are short, it's easy for you to get past them, and they are hyp hypnotized, uh, they are inert. Uh, it's easier for you to get to your weapon. So it's only going to cost you the one round to get the weapon, uh, rather than the I two. Have a backup weapon, but I figured. Yeah. yeah, I think that's probably a wise call. All right, so now let's go to you, M. What are you doing? Um, is. So the ones who are unhypnotized are over here to... They're, they're, so they're sort of behind you and to your left, and there are two that okay. were straight in front of you. They were focused on uh, Arkin, but as Arkin runs uh, or moves past them, let's see here, I'll tell you what they're doing. Uh, this one is still pursuing Arkin. Uh, this one has moved toward you. So you now have uh, two of them that are on you. Um, Oops, that guy's there. Would I, uh, just in terms of like spatial awareness, would I be able to cast Thunder Wave to push them away from me without hurting any of my allies? Uh, you would have, uh, we're not uh, Arkin now behind them. Well, I take that back. If you focus toward the ones that are immediately to your left, so here, let me, um, let me hide. In fact, I'll draw a little, I'll draw a little kind of, if you were to focus on Why is this not growing? What am I doing wrong? There we go. If you were to focus on these three right here, can you see that? Mm -hmm. You could blast them. Uh, Norin is above, so you could do that toward them uh, without impacting yeah. Arkin. And those three are unhypnotized, correct? One of them is unhypnotized. These these two are hypnotized. Oh, okay, okay. Never mind. Um, sorry for all the confusion. No, it's okay. Um, Okay, I think what I will do... In fact, I think, uh, yeah, you can see the bases are blue on all the ones that are hypnotized. Oh, thank you. That's very helpful. Oh, oh amazing. Um, yeah, then I will... Okay, I see it now. Thank you, John. Uh-huh. Um, well, could I do, like, a thunder wave towards, like, where Norin is flying uh, of the non-hypnotized ones? Yeah, so if you go back that direction, what is the um, what is the radius? It's 30 feet, is that right? Uh, it is a 10, 15-foot uh, cube originating from here. All right, a 15-foot cube. So let's, let's do this. Let's go and let's call this so... It's 15 by 15, so let's call that. 
I'm gonna say you can get... Yeah, you can get those four, all four of them in that direction. Yes, you can. Um, you'll see kind of this like brilliant sparkling um, paint jar kind of get tossed up into M's hand and she like smacks it uh, towards them and just uh, will say, I'd prefer it if you were a little further away. Thank you very much. Uh, and we'll cast Thunder Wave at them. Okay. Um, a con save. All right. So, and describe what that looks like as you're casting it. Uh, so she takes that like bright, brilliant kind of like crackling lightning colored paint uh, and like smacks it into her hand. And as it does, you kind of hear that clap of thunder. Um, and you just see like pigment paint sort of fall to the ground. And as it does, it kind of has that like that uh, a lightning striking the earth, uh, a bolt of lightning striking the earth would, you see, you know. Some of them may move back, some of them may bolster. As she does this, um, each of them needs to make a, so uh, first of all, on a failed save, that's a con save, and the DC is 15? 15. Yep. Yes. All right, you catch three of them, um, and one of them is the one that was partially squished uh, by Arkin. That one, as your blow hits it, it, it uh, skitters back and is blasted apart, already damaged, uh, where Arkin had, uh, um, or where tar uh, Tarmac, pardon me, had squished it. Its guts uh, splay out, and the creature falls inert against the wall. Um, this one uh, is also thrust back. This was the one that had been damaged by Falmorn. Similarly, uh, in fact, I'll let you describe what this looks like to me as your thunderbolt strikes this one and it's blasted back. I think kind of as that pigment hits the ground, you watch as like these gentle little flecks of paint just seem to coat it and force it against the stone wall uh, with a force unbecoming of the casting that has been done. Uh, like, there is a gentleness in the casting that this spell work does not reflect. Uh, and it just kind of just against the wall. And I think you see M kind of curiously take a small beaker and uncork it and look at, like, the dripping viscera of, like, that'll make an interesting color. Uh, and it's ready to kind of collect it after they're all done. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. Okay, so as you do that, the third one that you strike, uh, go ahead and roll 2d8 for damage for me, please. Uh, it is, oh, just 2d8? Uh-huh. Uh... Oh, well, actually, which which level did you cast it at? Because you have it memorized at two separate levels. Did you cast it at second level or oh, third level? Uh, I ca cast it at second level, so it is 2d8. Yeah, 2d8, uh-huh. Ooh, that's a seven. And that is a four. Yes. So 11. 11 points of damage. All right, and this one this one was undamaged, and it did make it saving throw. So <sighs> kind of blows over, uh, partially damaged, but does not move. Uh, now we go to you, Tarmac. All right, uh, that one to my left. Uh-huh. Uh, I will go with that. Tarmac will, will shout, I was squishing the other one. <laughs> oh, help yourself, help yourself. I didn't mean and, to be greedy, uh, I'm sorry. Again, I was using... The, the great weapon master crit or well, 20 I, I, I hit 20 on the die all right roll roll another d20 see if it's a hit that will confirm the crit well, that's cocked uh, 18 on the dot. That is a crit. So we go to the ever mysterious Tim crit tables re please roll percentile dice for me. Uh, 52 52 on the die all right go ahead and start rolling your damage while you're doing that. Very fun. Very exciting. <laughs> like stepping out a cockroach. Mm-hmm. He just hit with his club. I think I've run into cockroaches that big in Florida before. Yeah, well, that's right. Uh, so just damage alone is 38. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, plus the crit. 
Um, I'll read to you how the crit reads, and then I'll let you sort of describe how you want this to play out. So, your we weapon crushes your opponent's uh, side, damaging the spleen, uh, causing uh, internal materials, bleeding, organs crushed, uh, membranous tissue covering them, um, steady push of blood through all orifices. Uh, so, you tell me what it looks like. Tim wrote those tables, right? Yeah, and well, and, 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 and with help with help from somebody who is actually a doctor, a medical doctor. So yeah, they're they're fun. <laughs> the Torek wow. grab his ball, and he'll kind of swing back, and he'll do kind of like an underhand and swing towards the side of this thing, and just smack it right on its side as it just pummels right through it. It's like a huge golf swing. As you do this. Icor and guts spray everywhere. Um, Em, you feel like a warm coating of entrails strike you from behind, uh, giving you a, a nice green coat, uh, you know, from the from your back, just below the cut of your hair, all the way down uh, to your calves, uh, as it uh, splays out. Let's go to you now, Norin. Well, that, well, that's only my first attack. Uh, well, oh yes, there is one to your right. Uh, this one right here, you can attack. That would be 18. That is a hit. Roll damage. 18. Ooh, max. Uh, 12. 28. Again, uh, this one was inert, uh, helpless, and now it is uh, splayed out all over. Again, now from the front M. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. you get covered from the opposite side as this creature is uh, squeezed and its guts fly everywhere, and uh, it is now dead. Uh, now we go to you, Norin. <laughs> this is a beautiful Jackson Pollock of death and my core that you guys have laid out before me. Let me join in, please. <laughs> Throw a fireball for our level friendly hit, 19 plus. Wait, you do a fireball? A firebolt. Oh, firebolt. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That extreme. He's that guy. Oh, no. All right. Um, interesting. So what is, the, uh, what is the DC I have to save on? The DC is a 15. And that's for half damage? Um, or or is, that a, is that just a miss? Well, it doesn't. It says I just have to roll a... I'm here, let me let me. We'll, we'll use the 5e version of this. Let me look at it real quick here. We are playing modified. It's really 3.5 slash 1e, uh, but we're using a lot of the 5e elements just to make it easy for everybody because we uh, are using D&D Beyond today. So if you're trying to discern the edition, uh, don't bother. Uh, it is it is a mutt of an edition that draws from my favorite parts of all of them. Uh, but there is a good solid rule set behind it, and it is all being played as it should be. So, Firebolt, you're casting at first level, correct? And uh, correct. It's, it's technically says there's no save, but if there were okay, so you have to make a range spell attack. So you, so you have to roll to hit. It did. I rolled a 19. Oh, okay, you hit. Uh, All right, and so six. it so it takes one d10 of fire damage. Uh, you you uh, lash out with this bolt of fire. It strikes the creature. Uh, this one right here, or which one was it? Actually, is it do one I of the? Get, do I get so just just at five uh, fifth level? It's two d10, but I can get one d10. It's fine by me. Oh, no, it's 2d10. Yes, okay, roll, roll 2d10 then. So I did. So that was a 16. Oh, that was 16 points of damage. All right, which one were you hitting? I was going to hit one of the... Um, um, close down. There are three in a row here uh, that are sort of sitting inert, and there's this one here, uh, which is still quite active and lively. That would be the one. The one that's still active. All right, John's one D and D. Uh, there you go. No, cons consider it basically three point five. Uh, but I love some one E elements, and then we're using things like advantage and whatnot um, in a certain uh, fashion here uh, with five E. All right, so uh, you singe the creature. <laughs> You hear the sizzle, uh, the charnel scent of burnt chitin uh, fills the air. The smoke uh, comes even as uh, the dust is still settling from the thunderbolt uh, that M sent out. And uh, now we go to Falmorn. Okay. Hiding Falmorn, in the shadow of seeing the theme, tarmac. You know, half the board is cleared on this side. Um, we'll now dash up to that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love it. I love it. Oh, there's eight of them. Farmord hides behind Tarmac. Oh, there's only four left and we seem to be winning. Tarmac, Farmord, come back in. <laughs> All right, roll the hit. And it, take his rapier and, and, and swing it out. Just try to spear straight in the hole from the burnt spot. With any luck, that's a uh, 23 total. That is a hit. And no luck of luck, Norin has already softened him up for me a bit. <laughs> it is time for Falmorn the Brave. Two, four, <laughs> 10, 13, 17 points of damage. Oh, well, tell me what it looks like, Brave Falmorn. He, he literally comes up and he, he sees it's clear and he comes running up and, and sort of swirls it around and then just like finds the, the burnt spot that, that is now, you know, burnt a hole in and just like skewers it all the way through the thing as fast as he can because he doesn't want to make the big explosive mess of blood <laughs> and then try to pull it straight back out leaving it to like drop on the floor nicely done uh all right now we go to initiative and i won again that time so it's going to rotate around to you greg uh the dm has a three on the die come on greg sorry you win again okay. all right unfortunately there is nothing for me to do this round. Um, these three are all just sort of sitting there quietly, and now we're going to go to you, Arkin. All right. Um, you scoop your blade up, uh, a little bit embarrassed. You know, sort of that feeling that we all have when we stumble and fall and look around to make sure no one noticed. Uh, you pull, you pull, you pull your blade bravely off the ground, hoping even Heronius himself did not see that. Yeah. It's over there behind that rock. The knight's still young. I'm going to take a swing at one of them. All right. Roll to hit. Uh, this is a 21. That is a hit. And I can re-roll ones or twos. That is uh, 17 points of damage. All right. You strike the one on the far left. Uh, this one had not taken any damage yet. Um, as soon as you strike it, you see it skitters and comes to life, um, and you have a second attack. Yes, sir. And that's probably... That's only going to be a 13. 13. Uh, uh, that just misses. Um, and I've told you this before. You guys have kind of figured out. It's got a 14 armor class. You guys would have figured that out by now. Uh, okay, uh, let's go to UM. You see this one come to life. I think M will just say, oh, yeah, you're done. Uh, and we'll like just take out her right here and just like stab down into the head uh, as quickly as she can or attempt to. All right, go ahead and roll the hit. And I'm going to say it had turned toward Arkin, so you're flanking. That is a 14. That hits. That hits. Something. Roll your damage. Yeah, that's right. Amazing. Um, do -do. Uh, that's seven damage. Oh, so close. You strike it. It had already been hit by Arkin. Uh, the creature's now, it's lost two legs. It's skidding around, but its pincers are still active. It's its trying to scrabble toward Arkin uh, while still uh, barely alive. Now we go to you, Tamrak. Tarmac. Gosh, why can I? You're, just, you're, you're, His name's Tamrak now. You know, you're, you're, bi you're big enough to be an airplane. I should remember Tarmac. All right, so, uh, all right, uh, what are you doing, Tarmac? Uh, he will move to the closest one he can hit. All right, yeah, you take one giant step uh, right past M, and uh, there is this one right here just sort of sitting there almost like it's waiting for you to hit it. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be almost pushing his way. He might He might actually nudge M a little, just not even paying attention. Kind of, kind of. Yeah, you, you kind of you kind of feel a little bump uh, <laughs> on your side uh, as you bump her. You come away with some of that uh, the the oh. entrails on your arm. Uh, roll to hit. Five to hit. What was it? Twenty five to uh, hit. Definitely a hit. Uh, and then roll your second attack. The second attack, I will do the great weapons master with a dirty twenty to hit. That's okay. Both hits. Roll your damage on the two attacks. All right, the first one is uh, 13. And the second one is 25. Ooh. Again, um, relentlessly showering your party. Boom! 
Um, now, Arkin, you have it all over the front of you. M, you have a nice second coating on the front. Um, uh, you're actually it's fine. You, you're, it's fine. You're, you're you're admiring the colorful patina of these entrails, and uh, you're getting ideas for new paints uh, as they cover you. And uh, that guy is dead, and that leaves just the one remaining. Uh, what are you doing, Norin? Uh, John, though, no. uh, is that close enough for me to attack? Uh, uh, or you have cleave? No, uh, so I forgot Great Point Master. When I reduce an opponent to zero, I can use a bonus action to make another attack. Okay, so it's like cleave. Go ahead. Yes, you can. Yeah. Pretty handy. Uh, this is 20. Thud is right. Something. All right, that's a hit. It's a four. 16 damage. Uh, 16 damage. Oh, you know what I forgot to do, though? Every time you strike them, you're supposed to also have your weapon in jeopardy. Um, and I've not been keeping up with that. Now, your weapon has a metal head on it. Um, and it's magical. It is magical. Is it a plus one or a plus two? Plus two. Okay. So I'll just tell you, these, uh, as I mentioned, these are a variant. Plus two weapons are immune to their effects. Plus one weapons are not. Uh, your blade, Arkin, uh, what is it? Is it? It's a what? Plus two greatsword. It's a plus two greatsword. All right, uh, Foulmorn, your blade? Plus two rapier. Oh, look at you guys. You all chose the, I, I, get, I, I gave you. right. A, I, yeah, I, you did something right. So for, for the viewers, when they made their characters in, uh, in Beyond, I told them they could have one plus two or equivalent item and one plus one or equivalent item. They did not know what they were going to encounter. These, this particular variant of Rust Monster can still affect any magic item up to a plus one. Uh, the plus two weapons are immune. What about your rapier? Oh, look at you guys! Okay, well, nicely done. Um, so, what was the damage on that, Tam Tarmac? Uh, 16. 16? Yeah. Okay. Um, it now comes... Uh, alert is no longer uh, in that hypnotic pattern and has not been killed. Uh, and now we come back to you, Norin. Norin's a little distracted. He's actually up there with Hedwig, and he's going to try and show up and do a, a few barrel rolls and tumbles on his broom and see if Hedwig can keep up with him. <laughs> That's it. Okay, all right. I take out, I take out my, my steps pad so fast, and I'm like, I'm making notes about it. It's good. It's good. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you appreciate it. <laughs> I'm totally oblivious to the fact that one of these is still alive. All right, and uh, now it's Falmorn. The... Falmorn, what are you doing? I haven't got. Well, I can now be the hero again because you know I'm not covered in paint because I got you know blocked by the big giant man. <laughs> um, so I will, I will come out and do the same thing. Come running around. I'm looking. I'm all clean. I'm like this is how you do it. Okay. Uh, all right. Roll to hit. I was running under the man doing the tumbles on the you know broom over there. Oh, that's a nat 20. Okay. Nicely done. They just, it, it, it's like when somebody sort of loosens the lid on the jar for you. You know, you just, you come over there and you pop that lid off uh, once Tarmac has already got it loose. And a 17 on on the confirmation. Oh, oh that is a crit. All right, roll your percentile dice. Right. Right. And okay. while you're doing that, everybody type exclamation point troll in the chat, exclamation point troll. Uh, that will be for our first giveaway of the night. Uh, and so if you see that, uh, here, I'll type it in for you, exclamation. This is from Troll Lord Games, and that will get you in the giveaway we'll do here in a moment before we go to our one and only break in just a moment. And uh, that Troll Lord uh, gift certificate, uh, what was your percentile roll? Uh, 74. Oh, my goodness. Uh, all right, and yes, uh, those codes... I believe there are 10% off codes. Uh, if Jay's in, he can clarify that for me. Uh, yeah, uh, no, $10 off a single product. That's nice, $10 off of anything in their store. Uh, 74 uh, with your uh, blade. And that is going to be a level 10 crit to the body. That sounds nasty. Clearly, this creature is going to be dead. Uh, it's going to be dead. But I will let you... Um, 
hear what the crit is, and then you can decide how you want to adjudicate it. Um, <laughs> your weapon cuts through the uh, ribs and drives deep into the abdominal cavity, lacerating uh, the uh, the entrails. Heavy internal bleeding resulting from this will cause, and um, there's a cumulative loss, um, unconsciousness, death within a certain number of rounds. So you tell me what it looks like. Uh, well, he goes for the same kind of move. Once again, the last one worked so well. He tries to, to, to skewer in. Um, this time, not quite as clean. He goes straight through, but instead of coming straight back, he actually like ends up scooping up a little bit, and that's what actually cuts through the, you know, the the inside of the beast a little more. So it actually like splays it open at the top. And so you know, there is some spray which he tries to dodge because you know everyone's got to spray some blood around. <laughs> Nicely done. And uh, in moments, uh, all is still save the howl of the wind and the gurgling and twitching of these creatures in their dying throes um, as their life's blood spills and the heavy breathing of your comrades. <laughs> we got him! I think Em, like, well. with as much strength as she can muster, which, mind you, is nothing uh like pat's tarmac in like the center of the back and is like excellent work out there <laughs> truly amazing uh and begins kind of like casting crested digi digitation like down herself to kind of like <laughs> clean off the blood but he's like is very happy like genuinely not like disgusted but it's just like i prefer to be different like this would be better if i wasn't like this <laughs> uh, as, as you do this, you see her, she does this and it sort of sloughs off all of the, uh, the entrails and the ichor off of her. Um, John, is that uh, wind that's blowing through, going through the holes in my armor? <laughs> it, it is. It is. Uh, you know, it's it's casting a nice breathe upon the nethers. Uh, gets gets rid of the. Uh, That's what I was going for. <laughs> uh, as armor short. Uh, <laughs> Love it. Um, all right. So, as you as you do this, you hear a sound from behind the doors, uh, and it sounds like uh, perhaps the moving of uh, something from behind, maybe a crossbar, uh, tough to see. Uh, and the doors slide open. Oh, lovely. Oh, so we were supposed to pull them towards us, not push it. Oh, yeah. Run into that a thousand times. Happens to them. And as you turn nervously to see what's behind them, that's where we'll go to break. Uh, so Blue Box has one and only break. We're going to take about five minutes, five or six minutes. Everybody can grab water, get some coffee, uh, take a quick bio break if you need it. And we'll be coming back for the last hour and a half or so of our game tonight. Um, you guys are doing a fantastic job. Thank you to all the mad chatters, uh, not only for the support, but for the great chat. Uh, if you're first time here to Blue Box, uh, we love engaging with the chat. We love to see the chat be active. Um, and thank you to John Fuller, Demon Gund, who's kind of pulling the levers on Tailspire tonight so I can just focus on the DMing, and he's doing a fantastic job. Thank you so much for that. Hopefully it's adding something fun for the players as well. Um, and then as we're getting set to break, you type exclamation point troll uh, in the chat, and that will get you in the giveaway, and we'll do that first giveaway right after the break. Um, so we'll be uh, right back in just a few moments. Thank you to all of you again, and thank you to the Mad Chatters. Thank you to the players. Uh, thank you to everyone supporting Virtual Greyhawk Con, and especially to Lord Gazumba uh, for putting all this on. Thank you, Jay. Blue Box will be right back. We do leave the mics hot on break, uh, so if anybody wants to chat with the chatters, you can. And yes, I have emote walls up now on the breaks. I don't want them on when I'm playing, but I thought they're kind of fun, so we'll do them uh, at the start screen and on the break, so your emotes okay. will be seen. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, uh, all the first-time chatters. If you haven't yet, give us a follow. Uh, please follow the channel and support us. We, that'll get you notified every time we're live. 
We do stream three times a week here on Blue Box normally. Uh, we stream on Sundays our fantastic new Tears of Aired campaign, uh, which actually features one of the players you're watching tonight, Cameron. And that game is on Sundays. It is in the world of Aired, as designed by Stephen Chenault. And uh, it is his uh, vision, and it's a fantastic world. Uh, we're, we're starting out in the free city of Altamira, uh, which has also been featured tonight, and will be featured tomorrow in the Joust, because it exists both in the Aired and in the Greyhawk world. World. Uh, and then on Tuesday nights, we have our Greyhawk Awakening campaign. That's book two. We're, we were on episode 90 last week, um, but that story constantly renews. And so even if you've missed some, you can still join in at any point and you'll be able to catch up with the story quickly. And then Wednesday nights, we have our Lore Masters Arcanum. So uh, please give us a follow and support the channel. F support all the great Greyhawk streamers. Uh, this community continues to grow with great content. And I am so appreciative of all the support. Just give us a few minutes here and we'll be right right back. Maybe you can hear me. I'm, I'm sneaking in here. Uh, I'm John Fuller. I'm Demon Gun. I'm the one kind of running the camera and stuff. Uh, if you're interested in this map, uh, it is a Tales Tavern. It's called Barrel Fork Mine. Um, and Heim Dollar and I make Tailspire maps and 5e adventures. Uh, and this map is actually done by Heim Dollar. Uh, he does all of our adventures and encounter boards. So just wanted to. Tarmac's armor took one hit? Yeah. Okay. So you don't yeah, have a not... big gleeping hole in it, you know? No. <laughs> okay. Whereas Arkin is going to end up wearing, you know, a loincloth. Well, I'll give something uh, glorious for him to paint. There no, we go. A naked man running into battle. <laughs> Uh, 
I was originally gonna go with they only plus one weapon. <laughs> take something else. I end up I end up mixing it around and I changed it and I'm like, oh thankfully. John, we end up finding the Overgore as the BBG. So we'll see who, what it is tonight. What it is tonight, and how bad will it be? But don't worry, I'll let you guys have the glory. AKA hide in the back until I can, you know, need to hit things. Well, rogue's got a rogue. The rogue's got a rogue. <laughs> That's not my thing. I do not stand up front. That does not happen. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for hanging with us through the break. We're going to be back in just a moment. Uh, if you haven't yet, it's not too late. Type exclamation point troll in the chat. Uh, you'll have a chance for our uh, Troll Lord Games $10 off anything in their store. Thank you very much for our sponsor. Um, a sponsor not just of Blue Box, but a sponsor of all of Virtual Greyhawk Con. And all right. And before I come back, let me make sure all the cameras are still in the right spot. Da -dun -da -dun -da -dun -da -dun. Yes, they are. M did not mess them up. <laughs> <laughs> and all right, and with that, uh, we are back on three, two, and one. Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, this is uh, Blue Box here, uh, and we are enjoying Virtual Greyhawk Con. It's been a full day of gaming. My players are doing a fantastic job tonight, and the, the fans and viewers have been absolutely outstanding. So thank you for the support. And let's go ahead and do our first giveaway tonight, our Troll Lord Games uh, giveaway. And this is for a $10 gift card. Let me pull up the night bot here. You'll see the winner pop up in the chat. It's not too late. You have a few more seconds if you want to type exclamation, exclamation, not, ex, ex, <laughs> not exclamation, <laughs> exclamation point, uh, and troll. And the winner of the first gift card is Manda. Let's go, mystical unicorn. Congratulations. That's funny. She just put something in the chat too. Um, all right, so Manda, uh, I'll have the code for you. Just get with me afterwards. We're gonna have another one in a few minutes. Uh, so. Wait, hold on, Cameron dropped, and now she's coming back in. Uh, we probably got all of our views messed up. Yep, we do. Okay, hold on. Hold on one second here. There it is, and then we just need to swap those two, and we're back. All right. Very good. Uh, so congrats. Uh, go ahead and let's do it again. I'm going to refresh it here, and we'll do another one of those in a moment. Uh, then we also have a couple other things to give away tonight. Whoops, uh, ignore that. Sorry, that's not correct. Uh, that's not another winner. There will be one later. I meant to refresh it. So, so far, only one has been given away. And now we're going to start the second giveaway. Same thing, exclamation point troll. Put it in the chat. If you didn't win just now, you can win again later. Uh, pop that in the chat, and you will be in the giveaway for the second one. Uh, all right, now we go back to the game. Reminder, oh, also, I wanted to mention something. So, uh, yeah, we have great, many great sponsors here. 
Uh, one of them is Mantic Games, and Mantic Games has something uh, that they launched uh, recently, which is really cool. Uh, Blood Wild, Steve brought this to my attention, and uh, I wanted to show it to you. If you haven't seen these, uh, they're going live, these dungeon pre-order uh, plus free RPG sets. So they're box sets of adventures. They include the book, a two-sided mat, uh, scenery pieces, like 3D scenery pieces. Uh, this one's got dungeon trap, terrain, summoning portal, magic circle, torture chamber, graveyard, cemetery. Um, this one, Secret of the Wizard's Tower, very cool setup, includes the adventure book, uh, the mat, and it's got minis in it. It's got an owl, wizard study. So it's like a, it's basically an adventure in a box with 3D ter terrain and minis uh, that you can find on the Mantic game site. So I'm sure you'll see these as giveaways uh, here coming soon also at Blue Box. But big shout out to our friends Mantic Games, makers of Terrain Crate, Kings of War, and all kinds of cool games. Uh, all right, players, as we resume the game, um, you are beneath the mines of uh, Veramar, and you have just finished uh, an engagement, if you could call it as such, uh, with these rust monsters, which you uh, dispatched of quite summarily. Uh, very, very lucky um, that uh, this particular variant uh, did actually have the ability, as I said before the break, to impact magical weapons up to a maximum of plus one. Uh, when I gave you the ability to pick any um, item up to plus two that you chose, none of you chose armor. Uh, actually, uh, Tamrek, I thought you had chosen something. I thought your belt was your plus two item. No, oh, I... I'd switched that uh, early this morning. Oh, you did. Okay. All right. All right. Good. Well, wise of you. Um, as the portal opens, um, you hear a voice behind, and you see a swarthy-looking dwarf uh, come walking into view um, with a slightly smaller dwarf standing next to him. Uh, he looks up uh, from beneath bushy brows. By the gods, how on earth have you made it down here? We walked. Oh, a cheeky one, are you? He looks around and he sees the scattered corpses at your feet. Um, he has a he has a helmet on with a small uh, sort of wax candle atop it that could be used for lighting down in the mines. Um, he's got a long beard uh, that hangs below his waist. Have you seen the nerves of the miners? Is anyone left alive? You're the first we've seen. Can we yep. have your name, sir? Uh, please, c come in. Come into the supply room here. There may be more of them out there. It's not safe. Yes, sir. Alborn will follow in and oh. glance behind and head on in. Okay, he sort of steps back. You enter into a, a large supply chamber. Um, it's got racks after rack of uh, various mining uh, implements. You see pickaxes and shovels laden against the wall, crates, uh, empty ore carts, extra wood, uh, a couple of desks uh, where journals and ledgers are being kept. And um, as you come in, uh, the dwarf hastily goes over and uh, looks around surreptitiously and then pulls the doors closed again. Can we do we see any um, any iron steel? Yes, uh, you do. You see, uh, apparently everything uh, here has been uh, kept intact. Um, so no, whatever these creatures are, these uh, they have not reached the inner part of this uh, chamber, protected by these large stone doors. What brought you here? How did you know we were here? We were sent by the town. Uh, there's been a disaster here, is what we were told. I. It all started with the earthquake. But three days ago, the mining was going fine, there were no issues. When the quake came, not only did some of the tunnels collapse, others of them were opened. It's the open ones that are probably the most concerning. Uh, we're also here to find survivors. He kind of sighs heavily. Um, he looks over at his comrade. Um, he sets down his hammer 
and sticks out a um, a meaty hand. Uh, so who, who is speaking? It's Arkin, I think, that's mainly speaking with yes. him. Um, he sticks out a, a meaty hand uh, towards you. I give him a good handshake. I am Harthis. Well met. Uh, he gives you a firm shake. Arkin uh, Valerianus, at your service, sir. A knight, I see. This is Taris. Taris is my understudy. A good lad, but he's not very good with words. I, I nod respectfully to his uh, his comrade. <laughs> Are you still flying, Norin? <laughs> no, I, I have uh, come down. Thank you. Uh, okay. <laughs> John, John, when we get a chance, I want to uh, lay on hands on the injured party members. I what? assume the temporary hit points are going to disappear, if not already, soon. You can you can do it now. Go ahead and role play it. Uh, all right. Who's Falmore? Now you 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 were very uh, judicious with your attack, so I'm, I'm sure you're not injured. I I took a hit, but not bad. <laughs> Tarmac. What uh, a polite way to put it. Judicious with your attacks. I you know. <laughs> that was nice. I like it. Uh, Tarmac, you're too big and scary. Nothing attacked. Uh, did you get? No. I, don't think I have a scratch right here. <laughs> um, just a scratch. Uh, also, update about the temporary hit points, at least according to what I've searched. Uh, your temporary hit points last until you're reduced to zero or until you take rest. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. There well, you go. You still heal people that have actual wounds. Yeah. Uh, I, and then we, you do Arkin and just kind of... Uh, gesture to her leg that's still pretty actively bleeding and just like, well, I mean, I wouldn't mind. Okay, how many Aid. points? How many points uh, out of character? How many points do you need? Um, I'm at 27 out of 38, so not not much. 38, so that's 11. I All mean, right. you don't have to feel. No, I... I uh, I lay hands respectfully on Emma, and uh, I'm sorry, on M, and I lay, I, I heal her for 11 points. I think she like looks at you and is like, oh, kind, thank you, uh, and like kind of like lightly pats your face and uh, <laughs> asks in return, Are, "Do you find yourself in need of any?" Uh, I have, I have a wound, but I can. Uh, Oh, that's loud. Sorry, uh, I'll turn that down. That's too loud. I have a wound. Uh, John, I'm going to use my celestial healing ability on that as separate from the paladin lay on hands. Okay. And that, heals, that heals five points. All right, and you feel again the healing power of Heronius. That's all. The, there you go. I like that. The powers of the heavens themselves uh, provide me with the healing. A beautiful thing. So you're asking me about survivors. <laughs> and uh, Norin, you were flying around, so I don't think you're hurt. Norin's gonna like judiciously turn his, his head to the side, and it, they'll have a little scratch, which looks suspiciously like owl, an owl uh, claw. And say, no, I, I'm okay. I can toughen up. <laughs> you know, we don't heal self-inflicted wounds. <laughs> <laughs> it is my dear hope there are survivors, but. We have not heard anything from deeper in the mines in days. We've been hiding in here, hoping that someone would come to aid us. Everything has been destroyed. All the metal is taken. Other than these these roach-like creatures, these monsters, rust monsters, is there anything else down here that you've seen? I... have seen the big ones. There, some of them are at least 10 feet long. You mean more like those? I point to the dead rust. Well, uh, are no, they're nothing like those. Giant mandibles. They sliced large enough to cut a man in two. Lumber hulks. My guess. He, he, he shrugs, not knowing what you're speaking of. Are they bigger than me? <laughs> he looks over at you. Uh, longer, perhaps. Not taller. 
I'll squish them too then. So is there another exit down out of there, or is the way we came in the only way? Uh, there's only one way in, one way out. There is the deeper caverns. That's where I believe any survivors might be. I have a map if you wish to see it. Yes, we've been looking for a map. Uh, he walks over, trundles to a desk, uh, pulls open a wooden door with a stubby hand, um, rubs his chin, pulls out a piece of parchment. He slaps it down on the desk and he unravels it. I've already updated it. Where you see the axes, these are where the tunnels have caved in already. And I'll show you here on the screen. So you see uh, this, you can tell by where you came in, this is where you're at uh, here at the base. Uh, this is the supply room that you're currently in. You recognize that caved in tunnel, that's right where you, you saw the cave in. This would be the passageway that kind of dog legged a bit, you couldn't see deeper down. He takes a stubby finger, he thunks it down on the map. Straight. Straight down the path. And he points his finger down here, he says, As we dug deeper, this is where we found the natural cavern. The tracks lay inside here. This is where most of the miners were and where I believe any who are surviving may be there. And that is where we must go. Well, there I'm looking at the map. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, um, do you know where these beasts are coming from? Uh, is there a way we could cause another cave in to prevent them from coming out? He kind of starts uh, to any minor mention of causing a cave in. Mm. Uh, is is so uh, he, uh, he he kind of um, not ideal, but it'd be a shame if these beasts were to continue to roam free. He nods. Um, perhaps, if you're brave enough to go see, perhaps you can see if there is a place where they could be collapsed, but dangerous to do down here. Mm. Understood. Um, can I provide you any other supplies, anything that you need? Well, the map would be handy if we can take that with us. He rolls it up and he hands it to you. Uh... We can all see in the dark, so we're pretty good there. I don't need anything. Um, as you say uh, this... Uh, M could use a towel to wipe herself off. Well, uh, I already did press it. No, she's already I pressed it, digitated it all off, so... <laughs> Uh, the, 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 the quiet, the bashful uh, younger dwarf, um, he does walk up and he goes up to you, Arkin. Um, and as he walks up to you, he holds out uh, a small vial. I graciously accept it. What is this? Um, as uh, Herthus starts to speak up, uh, his understudy uh, just motions. Does it look like a type of oil, like to go on a weapon? Yeah, and then, and then Herthus oh. speaks up. <sighs> the lad gives you the last of our supplies. Rub that on your armor or on your blade. There should be enough for at least two strikes there that will protect. Uh, protection against the rust monsters? Aye. Okay. Anybody else wearing armor that needs this? Yeah, I need it. <laughs> All right. So, so Tarmac, uh, Tarmac, I'm calling him Tarmac now. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, Tarmac. Okay, Tarmac. Tarmac. <laughs> Tarmac should use it for his armor, and I should use it for my armor since we have the most metal. All right. So you have you have two doses in. So it doesn't. Sorry, go ahead. I mean, is it something I asked uh, the dwarf? Is it something that stays on until used, or does it have a certain duration? 
Um, he kind of quirks his brow at the word duration, then seems to figure out what you're saying. Um, uh, we've not had time to see how long it will last. When it strikes, it immediately disappears from the blade or the armor. Well, we don't need it with the blade, at least that we know of, because our blades were immune last time. Um, unless, of course, the bigger versions affect uh, higher magic weapons that are more magical or higher magic. I think we should put it on the armor. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. All right. All right. So there are there are enough for two. Um, so one on uh, Tarmac, one on you, Arkin. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. Um, when I'm putting it, when I'm giving it to Tarmac, I'm also going to lay hands on him without him realizing it and heal whatever couple of points of damage he has. That's okay. two. Okay. okay. All right. Um, you feel the gentle warmth of Heronius light shining on you, and your wounds on your shins are healed. Um, and uh, with that expectantly, the the dwarf looks back at you and says, "You are on a one shot. You got to keep going." <laughs> <laughs> no, he says, exactly. "He says, I I worry for my comrades. Please, if you can aid them." Three. All right, we're gonna go. Every second counts for saving yep. lives. Um, just in case, I don't think that this would happen. Of course not. That definitely wouldn't happen. Uh, if you keep us yelling and running out, you should join us then. Just in case, you know, just just in case an emergency exit plan. Good to have. Good to have. But I think everything will go smoothly. <laughs> Already to leave. Uh, he he looks he kind of looks look at you nervously and he does note uh, the bandolier of paints and paintbrushes on you and seems to be quite perplexed uh, at what he's seeing. Uh, you Tarmac just got plus two from Wondred. Uh, thank you very much. So Tamrak add that. Oh one for no I'm sorry it's one for you one for M. I missed that. So Tarmac you get one. Uh, M you get one. Thank you Wondred and thank you for the gift subs as well. Um, all right and so anything else you want to do in here or need? I think we're ready to go. I, so I will look around and see if there's any gems around. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, you do see you do see some chests. Well, I'm not going to open a chest. That'd be a little rude. <laughs> <For now. laughs> okay, uh, for now. Uh, but yeah, no, 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 no gems just laying loose. Uh, so the dwarf he walks over. He pulls a big stone crossbar. You can now see was barring the door from this side, and then he just gives the doors a firm push. And again, that grinding of stone as the doors open, revealing the carapaces of the creatures you slew earlier and the yawning mouth of the cave beyond. Now they're gonna make for the for the surface. They're not coming with us, right? Uh, they, they tell you they're waiting here. Yeah, they're staying here, we're going. Oh, okay. All right, we're gonna, John, we're gonna go to the area of the map where they showed us. Uh, that there could be survivors. Okay, all right. So then uh, pulling the map back up here again so you can see it. Um, you're going to come out of this cavern uh, down this passageway, and then you're going to make a right and head in the direction of this long tunnel. Um, he tells you as you're leaving, it's a goodly distance. Um, it will take, you know, several minutes. Um, the corridors at least a quarter of a mile to the cavern deep in the earth Thank you. I can send I can send my um, owl forward if you'd like um, yeah that's up to you guys yeah actually I'm using that character Oh, okay. Uh, same thing. Well, Hedwig would well, scout the south for us, but I, I, in order to see through his eyes, I have to stay here by myself. Uh, you can't move. You. you 
can't move at all? I can't. I lose all of my senses. How about Tarmac carries you? Yeah, I was about to say, M kind of like looks at the two, like, <laughs> up, down, and it's like... That could actually oh. work. Okay, I'll come here! <laughs> and he'll go and pick you up in a big mall. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm scared out of my skull, but, but what the heck? I'm just, I'm going to uh, go, into, go into a trance and send Hedwig forward. All right, as fast as we can go. And we'll start following behind, just letting him fly ahead, though. All right. Um... So I'll go ahead just for, uh, this would be metagaming for the rest of you, so pretend you don't hear this, but just to save the time of, of typing the notes. Um, through your eyes, uh, you see Hedwig uh, staying a few feet off the ground. The cavern, uh, the, t- the uh, passageway is growing lower, um, no longer the height it was. In fact, you can even see through his eyes, it's gonna be difficult for Tarmac uh, to get through this section of tunnel. Um, and it slants ever downward, deeper and deeper, until um, suddenly he comes uh, into a large cavern, uh, clearly a natural cavern that was uh, found inside the mine. And uh, it's dark in here, uh, but you can see um, there are exits in multiple directions from the cavern, and there look it looks like there are creatures stationary uh, just sitting there inside the cavern. So this is happening while, so he's seeing all this. The rest of you are walking down the corridor. So as your footsteps echo uh, down the dry, uh, cool corridor, uh, we're gonna take a moment again. I want each of you, other than Norin, who is focused on this, I want you to tell me something your character sees, thinks, feels, or says uh, to someone else in the party. Uh, This could be as simple as an observation about something on the walls. It could be a remembrance of home. Uh, it could be a comment that you have. It could be removing a fleck of entrail from your chin. Uh, whatever it may be, uh, an opportunity for you as you're walking down this corridor. And I'm going to start uh, this with you, Tarmac. Right, uh, Tarmac, well, uh, he's probably in the, in the lead with uh, Arkit, like they have been. And he'll reach over and do a light punch in the, in the, in the shoulder. Like, oh, you ready now to fight something bigger? Absolutely. I wish I had you at my side when I was fighting in the Blood Wars. Don't know about no Blood Wars, but I select to spill the blood. Let's go take on this big old long monster and uh, wear its hide, his new armor. Ah, I had him on the back here. Funky. You know, he's, he tries to give you a gentle uh, pat, but it's, uh, it's you know, basically like you've just gotten a single strike Heimlich maneuver. Um, and you, it's a good, solid blow. Probably a dent in the armor. The armor's taking a beating today anyway. <laughs> no big deal. All right, let's go to you, Falmorn. Uh, Falmorn is uh, walking along. He's definitely very aware. His hand on his blade, he's just sort of almost like grabbing it to pull it out, but just like just on the edge. Um, he does pull up to M as they're walking. Uh, I appreciate your... Uh, sense of care, making sure that we're, you know, ready in case of a need for a retreat that, you know, everyone's prepared for that possibility. Um, we have a, a prepared exit strategy. Yeah, that's just good. Not um, to look the, the negative side of life, but all things in balance. Yes. Oh, but all you to have. Evident, but, you know, I had to make a speedy exit or two. And most, most, most of the rest of the time he's walking, he will be like along the wall. So it like trying to stay, there's not, it's dark. So it's not really shadows, but basically just not in the center. So. Okay. All right. Very nice. Uh, anything else for you, either Arkin uh, or for M? Um, M at certain points will kind of like, sort of drifting towards the back will pause, dip down, kind of like, grab a bit of the sediment between her fingers, sort of test it, see if there's any stick there. Uh, and if it seems interesting, she'll just kind of collect it, slot it into a different spot in the bandolier. Uh, you know, there's like moss thrown in the side, that 
put it in. Just a little bit of uh, foraging on the path. Very nice. Uh, before I come to you, Arkin, I want to answer the chat. So uh, the SB is Swashbuckler, uh, so he's a rogue Swashbuckler, and the RK is Ruin Knight. Um, so they are sort of more co complex multi-classes uh, that I just didn't have room to fit on the screen, but thank you for asking. Uh, oh yeah, it's, uh, Thomas has already got it. Uh, all right, Arkin, go ahead. All right, as I'm walking down the, the passageway, uh, I lean over to M and I say, I'm used to this type of stuff, but the rest of these uh, individuals are all heroes. Make sure you paint them as such. Oh, trust me. You, you won't believe how fantastic you all will look at the end of all of this. I, I assure, I mean, look, and like we'll flip around, like just some quick, like um, almost like charcoal sketches that she had done in the walk over to the mine of just like, a side profile, I think, with like Arkin, you see like a serious dedication in the eyes and in the jawline, um, a bit of, uh, you know, just that confidence uh, that Tarmac uh, kind of exudes in his being. Uh, you see sort of like the uh, darker edges of like Farborn and all that kind of stuff, like like little bits. Of but still very rough shots. Oh, these are just sketches. I mean, they're not, they're not the final thing, but they will. You wait, you're going to love it. <laughs> they, look, they look wonderful. Oh. And as I say that, John, I let a little bit of my celestial light out. Ooh. And so tell, tell, them, tell her what that looks like. Uh, kind of like an angelic glow, uh, but of course, uh, Arkan gives credit to Hieronius for such a thing. Sort of like a, just like a radiance around. Yeah, you see a divine time. radiant aura uh, that just uh, emanates a few inches off of uh, his skin um, and just carries with it this sense of confidence and peace. I think watch her like, almost like upsettingly fast, like grab his face, just like. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Amazing. Continue. Um, and it's just like, uh, you see her like make a couple edits to like just the way that things look in that uh, initial sketch and then like puts his face back where it was before. <laughs> I, I go along with it and I'm like, okay. All right. Uh, it takes several minutes as you walk down the corridor. Uh, in moments, uh, you see the owl uh, come fluttering back, and it alights on uh, Tarmac's shoulder, even as he's gripping um, Norrin. And you see Norrin's eyes uh, flutter open. <gasps> he gasps, and you danger, come back. Danger. Oh, sorry. Okay. So uh, uh, Norrin's gripped by a little bit of fight or flight type thing, and uh, startled. We go up ahead. As the passageway gets lower, it's going to open up into some a huge cavern, and there are shadowy figures there. I didn't see dwarves. I think there's danger ahead, so be careful. I'll cover you from the back. Norman, well done. Well done. Your avid eye. Thank you. All right. Um, as you move forward, uh, you eventually reach the place uh, that you saw uh, in your vision through Hedwig. And in fact, uh, the tracks, they do go off in a couple of different directions. You continue to move straight ahead down the tracks as following the map. And you come, uh, as I mentioned uh, a moment ago, your shoulders scraping the sides, and now uh, you have to kind of bend down a little bit uh, in this area, tarmac, uh, just to clear your head as you go deeper and deeper. You can feel the pressure of the mine um, as it sort of weighs on you. It's almost like you can feel the weight of the earth above you. Uh, this is comfortable for you, Norrin. Um, you know, you like uh, the you like the stone. You like the places of the earth, uh, but. Uh, for the others, um, very uncomfortable. And you see uh, the stonework uh, grows heavy and is uh, chiseled and cut here, but then uh, as the passageway grows, 
it opens up into a much larger natural cavern. Um, and you can direct your attention back to the screens here. I'll show this for you as well. Um, and as you you look ahead, thank you very much, uh, Gambo Podcast. Um, as you look ahead, uh, you see this massive chamber. Um, it is, the, the ceiling is extremely tall, um, probably 20 and 30 feet in some spots. Uh, but the walls here, as I said, are natural and rough hewn. Um, you can kind of stare through the large archway, but it's difficult to see beyond a few feet inside. Is it difficult because it's dark or is it difficult because it's just narrow? Uh, yeah, it's, it's both. It's dark in your dark vision, but you also have that just sort of that narrow, you can just see sort of straight ahead through this doorway. Right. I'll step through first. All right, you see Arkin as he steps forward. Uh, his armor uh, creaks a bit now uh, as he moves, which it didn't do before. I put oil on it. <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of oil. <laughs> um, and... Um, as you as you step through, uh, you do de- you have immediately this sense of openness and uh, the ability to breathe where you were feeling particularly constricted before. Um, you see ahead, and I'll pull the map back up here. It's consistent with what you saw on the map. Uh, this is the large cavern here. So the uh, the ore cart rails go in two different directions, uh, and you see large uh, pillars like uh, stalactites and stalagmites uh, from the floor. But then something else catches your eye. Uh, does the rest of the party follow, or do you remain behind? Falmore no, follow, going ahead. Yeah. but he fo- pulls up his uh, cloak. That okay. Is All right, tarmac. Cloak velvet kind. Yeah, tarmac is, is following right behind. All right, M and Norin. Norn's going to be um, waiting for stuff to go down, but he'll be hovering up on his um, room as well as he fall down again. Okay. As you all move inside the cavern, or you, uh, Tarmac, for the first time in a while, you're able to kind of stretch out and move a bit. You inhale deeply um, uh, the cold cavern air, and as you look around, something else catches your eye. Surely these are the creatures which match the description given to you by the dwarf. Um, You see three of them, two smaller, one larger, massive insectile-like creatures. Um, They have huge armor plates covering their bodies, uh, beady compound eyes, and the mandibles, massive slashing mandibles. Uh, the kind of thing which could perhaps slice a man in half or take a chunk out of a donkey's haunch. Um, neat, neatly scissoring, neatly scissoring pieces out of it. Um, it suddenly clicks in your head. Uh, but interestingly, much like you saw with the, the rust monsters that you faced the first time, they are strangely inert. Uh, they simply sit there, and I'll show you on the screen what they look like. If you want to direct your attention, there'll be about a two-second delay. And one larger and two smaller. Um, The large one is every bit as tall, uh, nine to ten feet tall uh, as uh, Tarmac, but also a good ten to twelve feet in length. Um, Massive creatures, and they just, they, they sit there almost like statues, but clearly these are living creatures. Falmorn will go ahead. I mean, he's not going up there, so he once again he sort of like slides to the side. He's got his cloak pulled, um, trying to basically blend in as much as he can with the wall to see what the others do. I get the big one. I'm gonna cast bless. All right, you cast bless. All right. I'm gonna cast bless because uh, this is gonna be a fight. And hopefully, last it says concentration up to one minute, but as I bless up to three creatures of your choice within range, 
Whenever a target makes an attack roll or saving throw before the spell ends, the target can roll a d4 to add that number to the attack roll or saving throw. Right. So I will choose Tarmac uh, M and myself. All right. Those are the most likely melee. All right. As you uh, you cast your bless, um, each of you feel this blessing settle on you. That blessing like sits with me. Like I think M one will like uh, rest a hand on his shoulder and just like give him a smile, and then like take in that light, and then with the other hand we'll just sort of like. Um, you see that there's like black paint and ink and just sort of uh, throws it forward almost in like light flex and will cast a uh, bane on those three creatures that are ahead. Okay, hang on a second here. Let me check something real quick. Too. Yeah, hang on. So you got to be, yeah, you have to be within 30 feet. So you're a little beyond that. Uh, currently, you are standing, let me check it here. You're about 80 feet away uh, from oh. the from the first or largest creature. And I will mention, uh, you know, as you, as you walk in, um, you see there's no recognition. There's no, there's not the slightest movement of, of a head or twitch of antenna. They remain completely inert. They're breathing? Maybe these are controlled by something. The other ones acted like they were being controlled. Excellent ideas. Huh? You really are intelligent, brilliant men. Now this will be your, this will be your one and only DM hint for the night. Think about Think about that previous encounter, and you've already mentioned something, which is an important note. That's as close as I'll get to a hint. Maybe we should attack them before they start moving. <laughs> Thank you for the gift sub. Uh, Continue it, Brungal. Do you all remember my... This here is my lucky charm that I referenced before, and I'll reach for my hand um, to the pouch at my belt and pull out a cube. This can get us through here. I can conjure a giant cube where nothing living can get in and out of, and it can move with me. We need to dispatch these creatures. We can't let them stay here. They may they exit mine. They could kill the whole town. Perhaps, or perhaps we get the miners out. Or perhaps there's something else larger. What's what's going to activate these creatures? Oh, I'll show you something larger. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right, no. So as he does this, Tarmac steps forward. Oh, no. And suddenly those spots on his face start to glow a little bit. And you see runes all on his face connect. Uh, and he will use giant smite to grow even bigger. Nice. Grow even bigger? How much yeah. bigger does he grow? Uh, well, in 5e, all creatures are medium. So this would tur turn him in 5e to a large creature. Well, you're yeah, you you're we're not we're not truly 5e. You were already yeah. close to 10 feet tall, so uh, we'll keep your your minis massive enough already. But we get the idea. <laughs> so but I do get an extra d6 on my attacks. All right, and so you do I this. To you see the already massive tarmac grow even larger. Um, somehow his armor swells with him. Are you doing? Any, is anyone doing anything? These creatures still are just completely inert. We should fireball them. Is he in Russia? No. <laughs> <laughs> and 
something in here that we haven't noticed yet? Especially like what? Mind you, I'm ready with a fireball at any point in time, but... Quite helpful. Just... I, I think... We're waiting for a command. It's just a matter of time before they... They activate, or maybe maybe they who's, sense movement with their antennas. That's where they. Who's commanding them? That's a good question. All right, party. What do you do? Um, we're we're running short on time. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, Tarbrex just going towards the big one. I say firebomb before I we get it. Destroy them before they get activated. So are you gonna are you gonna cast fireball? I'll cast Bane first, if that's possible. Okay, it is. All right, I'm so. I'm going to fly over and leave this one to me on the left, and I'm going to fly over with my broom over that way and be ready. There's a fireball that's going to be dropped over there, if need be. Nice. Oh, sorry, you're already flying. All right, so you fly and you move forward. So you say you're not going to fireball. We're not in combat yet, so you, you there are no rounds. Um, Exactly. So I'm going to fly over there and I'm prepared. I'm going to, I'm going to say fireball is getting dropped right here because I don't think I could get two of them with a fireball anyways. Could I? Uh, well, what's the radius on your uh, your fireball? Oh, okay. I didn't know if it was... Uh, yeah, you should have... I believe it's 60. Thing. I believe it's 60 feet. Or, well, yeah. it depends on the... Actually, it expands based it's on the distance. 20-foot radius sphere. 20 foot radius sphere. Yeah, you're only gonna get you're only gonna get one. You gonna go with the big one? Get the big one. Sure. All right. So you cast your bane, um, and you feel it settle on them, and then uh, suddenly, suddenly the room lights up with fire as a massive ball of flame starts fr- you know, starts as a, a fist-sized ball and quickly blossoms um, and illuminates the room in red hue as it explodes around the creature. Uh, please roll your damage. Uh, it's not going to get a saving throw for reflex because it was completely stationary and unmoving. And tell me what your damage is. Wait. <laughs> It was worth it just for the sound effect. And see the <laughs> yep. Whether it does anything or not, it was worth it. All right, what's the damage? Oh, I'm going to cast aid. I'm oh, sorry. 31. 31? <laughs> Boom! 86. Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, so that that's worth hearing the sound effect again. That's a good fireball. Um, it rocks the creature back. Uh, you hear it, it uh, utters a squeal, a uh, sizzling of its flesh. It skitters back, its antenna burnt, uh, its uh, insectile legs segmented, scratching against the ground. Suddenly, these two spring to life and lunge forward at you, and now we go to initiative. I was, I was casting aid, John, while. Okay. All right. Uh, DM has a four on the die. Uh rolling. I, I lost last time, so somebody else needs to roll. I'll go ahead and roll. All right, type exclamation point troll in the chat. We'll do our second giveaway here in just a moment. I got a four. All right, roll again. We both tied. Uh, I have on the second roll a three. A one. All right. Uh, so let's see on distance. Yeah, these things move uh, quite quickly. So uh, let me double check here. I'm, they're going to have a... We- we didn't win a single initiative, did we? Uh, I, I don't think you have. No, one, one, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's an easy close for this one. Uh, this one will get close. Uh, and this one will get close. Uh, but they don't get there. Uh, this one closes and attacks. Um, it lunges out at you. And Tarmac. Uh, Tarmac, you get five hit points your maximum and current hit points with aid. Uh, Falmorn you do as well, and, and myself. So that's, just add five hit points. All right, um, ouch, it, it hits you, tw- it hits you twice. Uh, scissoring, <laughs> cuts right through your splint mail. 
uh, and you and as it does so, not only do you feel the bite, but then you feel acid uh, come from between its mandibles. Uh, on the first bite, you take. 11 points of damage and then as the acid sprays inside the bite you take it so you take 14 total on the first one on the second one you take uh 12 total so 26 points of damage from these two bites as the acid is injected and that is their round now we go to the party let's start with you tarmac Hey, John, are yes. those made with um, Bane as well? Yes. Mine. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Okay. Um, Tarmac oh, will uh, reel a little bit from those hits. Uh, but uh, he will, on the other hand, grin broadly uh, at the joy of, of this now battle. And he will take his, uh, yeah, his mole, and he will just throw it down right and go straight to the big one. Okay, roll to hit. As a, I forgot, before I want to do that, I knew I was doing something else. Uh, as a bonus action, I want to take my potion of haste. Okay. All right, you quaff the potion of haste. Uh, as a bonus action, quickly unstopper it. Even as uh, the creature is slicing away, uh, cutting at your gorget, gorget there, and uh, opens up your stomach, uh, you know, down to the muscle, not down to the innards. Uh, now you have your attack. All right, and I also have now a plus two to my AC, so it's uh, 18. Okay. Uh, uh, first one's only a 10, so I'm sure that misses. Or you get your blast. You get it. You can. Oh. 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 14. Uh, 14. That just hits. Yep, same armor class. If you're blessed, you can roll that die four and to add to your attack. That will be... 13 damage. Second attack? Oh, you missed on the one, right? So 13, oh wait, but 13, and you had done 31, correct, uh, Norin? All right. Yeah. Um, uh, the creature badly burnt uh, as your maul strikes it. Uh, you crush, it kind of doubles over in two, and it's uh, it's like a spider. It kind of falls on the ground, and its uh, claws uh, come in, its mandibles twitching violently. This one is dead. Um, oh, look at that. And he sticks to the wall. Uh, that's kind of cool. Um, all right, now we're going to go to uh, you, Arkin. Does haste give me the automatic extra action right away? Yes. Because I would get three attacks. Yes, that's and, correct. And extra movement. Yeah, you can you can take you can close and do another attack on this one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I will do that. Uh, yeah, that is twenty-six to hit. Fourteen damage. All right. Boom! Your maul slams into this one. Um, it skitters and twitches at you uh, but closes to attack uh, on its turn uh, the next round uh, now we go to you Arkin I'm going to move to attack the one he just attacked okay uh, so let's check the, the distance there uh, you are from that you got a th regular 30 foot movement right hey John we're looking at the picture still on the stream yeah okay all right I'll fix that yeah so you it's 30 foot of movement you can definitely make that distance um, so you close, and now you can attack. Okay. Um, just question, every, uh, bonus actions, does everybody get those, or that's something that's class specific? No, it's, 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 yeah, it's standard. Oh, okay. But it's only certain actions, like, you know, only certain things are applicable to a bonus action. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, I'm going to just swing at this one, and that's a 24. Okay, that is a hit. And... 11, 11, so I do 17 points. Uh, all right, into the same one he hit, correct? Correct. correct. All right, uh, that one falls, uh, easily crushed 
Uh, you guys are a pretty potent group. Those are good <laughs> attacks. Um, and there is one remaining. Now let's go to you, Falmorn. Okay, how far is it from Falmorn to the last remaining one? Uh, it is, I think it's going to be a little past your movement uh, oh. and attack range. Yeah, it's, so you could sprint to it, but that would be your full round. Well, but I have I have a bonus action. I can I can run as a rogue on, as a bonus action too. So that gets and I get thirty five feet of movement. So I get seventy using my bonus and my regular movement. Okay, but you don't get an attack at the end of that. Oh, okay. So you can move uh, seventy feet, but you won't get a full round of attack. Well, then I won't even. Let's see. Um, one second. Uh, then. I think what I'm going to do is I will, uh, since I'm going to be too much, I'm not going to go stand up there because I have to play tactically. That's the word. <laughs> um, Judicious. Judiciously. I, I'm actually going to go run over uh, near Tarmac. There's that post there <laughs> and try to hide behind the post to like it, you know. Okay, right there. Basically try to stealth over there. All right. Uh, yeah, so you do. You move past. Um, you see the... Uh, you see the guts of the creature leaking out on the ground uh, as you move past Arkin and Tamrak. Uh, now we go to you, M. Um, I think M kind of like looks at the last remaining one, you know, steps up as much as she needs to, looks at it, looks at her sketchbook, looks back at it, and just kind of like narrows her eyes. I'm sorry, you, we, we lost your audio there. So yeah. she narrows her eyes and then what? Uh, she'll kind of like look at it, look back at the sketchbook, shake her head, put the sketchbook away, and we'll just cross her arms and shake her head at it. And we'll just go, not even worthy of the beginning. <laughs> I will do mockery on it. Vicious <laughs> 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 mockery. It's just mockery with the painting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, I love it. All right, so um, need not understand. Okay, I, I, that's very interesting to me how that works. Uh, I would, I would not play that way. But we'll go ahead and let the five E rule stand here. I don't see how you can mock something that doesn't understand you, but we'll we'll let that go. Uh, okay, so. I'm sorry. Well, you're breaking up again on audio. What was that? Uh, it, it's baned as well. Yes, it is baned as well, so it's got the D4 uh, minus on it. Um, okay, all right, roll 1D4, give me the damage, it failed the save. Uh, and then it's going to be disadvantage on its next attack. Uh, I'm going to use that plus one I've been holding on to, though. I've got a plus one from the audience that's coming on this attack uh, with my... Um, I'll also use another charge of my uh, mantle of inspiration to give people the ability to uh, use their, um, their movement and gain eight temporary hit points. I'm going to use that on myself. I'll use that on uh, Tarmac. I'll use that on um, who else? Huh. Who else should I give it to? Uh, I think Arkin and yeah, I think that does it. Okay, uh, you cast your spell, and uh, now we go to Norin. Norin. Well, he didn't. The other one didn't like fire, did he? And he's going to do a forward slip on the broom and throw a um, throw another fireball at him. So All right. Use my one too. All right, roll to hit. Oh, I know. 14. Uh, that hits. Nice. 14 Those temporary hit points. Hit point stack. Uh, uh, well, no. All right. The damage was how much? 14. 20? 14. Oh, 14. Okay. All right. Um, again, uh, you... Oh, fire blossoms around the creature. Um, it is still alive. It squeals, and now it is its turn to attack. How high are you, Norn? I'm uh, as far as <laughs> reach if you were to reach. All right, so so you're higher than I have you here, is what you're saying. I kind of thought I you might. How tall this cavern is? 
I, I kind of I thought you might feel that way. Um, yeah. So let's get you a little higher. Um, all right, then uh, now the creature is going to, let's see, closest would be Falmorn, uh, who is hiding behind the pillar, but this creature has the angle. Uh, actually, I'm going to say one to four toward Falmorn. There's a five to six chance it moves and pursues M, uh, which is also in its field of vision. And no, it does like the look of Falmorn. Uh, it lunges forward and attacks twice. Um, that is a hit. And that is just a miss. Falmorn, as it bites you, uh, you feel the laceration of the mandibles. You take 11 points of damage plus, ouch, six from the acid, 17 points of damage. Well, I will use my uncanny dodge that says when I uh, see it get hit by something that can, I can see attacking me, I can use my reaction to have the damage against me. Okay, uh, and that, that is a, um, that's a feat that you're using, and you get that how often? Uh, that's a reaction one once per round. Uh, hang on here. Let me let me double check that. That's, a, that's my level five uh, ability. Okay, and I want to make sure we're handling that properly. Uh, yep. So just one second here. Uncanny dodge. Yeah, I'm familiar. It, I, it it exists in other editions of the game. I'm familiar with uncanny dodge in 3.5, uh, but you know that's a little bit different here. So let me just make sure I'm doing this right. Dun, 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 dun. All right, and so you're saying you see this as once per combat. It, it could not be more than once per combat. That would make no sense. So I'm going to say this is once per combat that you can use that. Okay. Otherwise, you could be having every attack every you ever attack. receive, which makes no sense. Um, well, that's 5e. <laughs> yeah, no, no, like, all right, you could use it one time per combat. So you're using it here? All right, so you no, take... Yep. All right, so that would only have the damage of the bite. Uh, the acid damage would not be halved by that. The acid has hit you. So uh, I had 11, so you take a round down. You take 5 plus the 6, so you take 11 instead of 17 points of damage on that. Okay. And now we go to initiative. Uh, DM has a 4 on the die. Someone else try. Uh, I haven't rolled yet. Who is it, though? Yeah, you're up, Chip. Six. All right, you have initiative. Hey, you initiative. All right, since you won initiative, uh, Chip, um, do you want Norrin to do something here, or what are you going to do? Nah, Norm's gonna. Actually, you know what Norm will just do, just for the heck of it. He's going to um, stand, go right above the, above him, and drop another. Well, he's gonna drop it a little bit to the side, anyways. A firebolt. All right, roll to hit. It's a four. Um, uh oh, okay. I see what you meant. All right, uh, the creature. Uh, it's you know eyes are compound. It sees you above. It's already been stung once by your flame. It skitters to the side and <laughs> the bolt hits the ground. Uh, let's go to you now, Falmorn. You're standing right there, toe to toe. You've just taken a nice injection of acid from the creature. It's your attack, or your turn to run, whichever you choose. Oh, well, I'm tactical. <laughs> um. <laughs> So I, I can I can attack it. There's no other. Let's see. What's I'm, I'm looking real quick here to make sure I've got this right. Um, yeah. So I will move. Just rotate a little bit around. I have to have only him next to me, which I will if I move just slightly. Right. Um, and then I will attack him. Okay. Get my D20 out. Pull out the rapier. R after you know, trying to shake off some of this acid. I would rather have the paint, but okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> So that is a, hold on, 12 plus, that's a 21 to hit. That's a hit. Um, so I get my sneak attack plus my D6s here. So that's five, seven, ooh, not very good, nine, 12, uh, 19 points of damage. 19, wow. 19, uh, then, uh, since I am a swashbuckler and I have attacked it, I can run away tactically without being attacked. <laughs> run away, tactically, run away. Tactically run on the other side of the big guy. Now, now, am I, am I not, am I not incorrect that you played Finn in my one shot last year with uh, Mike Disney and also ran away and were the only member of the party that survived what would otherwise have been a TPK? I was, but he wasn't a rogue. <laughs> yes, he was the one that survived. We have joked all year long, Safin ran away, bravely ran away. I'm seeing a theme with your characters, Don. <laughs> I need to survive. You know? All right. It's not the character class, it's the player. <laughs> That's right. So. Uh, all right, let's go to you, Arkin. 
Okay, I will uh, move up and engage it. And one question, M, the temporary hit points don't stack from your last spell, is that right? No, they won't stack, yeah. Okay, I already have eight. Okay, I will swing at it. And I'm assuming a 13 misses. That is correct. Your blade scrapes along the chitinous plates, um, does not penetrate. You see a little chunk of chitin go flying across the floor. I missed it twice. Uh, the second time, uh, the creature, uh, it's getting wiser. It saw the firebolt coming. It sees the blades. It's learning your combat techniques. Uh, as you swing your blade, it basically undulates its stomach. So it kind of curls in and caves over. Your blade goes right through where its stomach was before. Now we go to you, Tarmac. All right, uh, I'm gonna start with a uh, bonus action second win. So takes in a big deep breath and it, it pulls his inner power in and he gained, he will gain 14 hit points. Okay. And then he will go straight to the big thing and be like, but more crushing. <laughs> <laughs> and he will go uh, great weapons master this time. Twenty-four to hit. That's a hit. Roll damage. Twenty-nine. Oh. Tell me what it looks like. Wow. Nice. Yeah. So he just comes and is like, "I am bigger than you," and just <laughs> take it forth, just down right upon it, its skull, and just smash this thing to the ground. Tarmac has just been obsessed with the fact that these creatures were cited as being uh, perhaps larger than he was <laughs> and has not been able to get out of his head. Uh, okay, we, we do need to move uh, the game along here quickly, but I would like to just take a moment uh, as you're breathing heavily again, uh, the silence and the squelching sounds of blood and Icor pouring out of these creatures onto the stone. <sighs> what do you guys do? I'm going to heal people that need healing. Tarmac, how badly hurt are you? Uh, not 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 bad, that bad. So check with others first. Uh, Thalamorn, you took a nasty shot. I, it all it would all temp HP and those five extra I got from aid. So I'm okay. Fine. All right, you're fine. Where are yeah. the exits to this cavern? Um, as you. As you look around, you can see several different uh, ways out of the tavern. Uh, but now that you have a moment to breathe, what catches your eye is a brilliant vermilion glow uh, coming from the far end of the tavern. Uh, the brightest, most emerald green color you've ever seen seems to pulsate, and you feel drawn to it. Yep, yeah, that's the portal to hell that I was talking about before. <laughs> and forward, and it's just like, I have to have that. I have, and it's like, oh, so, so. I'm like, all right, uh, you all approach it. As you move closer, uh, you can see this looks like a newly opened area uh, of the cavern. This must be the part uh, that the earthquake opened. And um, you can see uh, there's some uh, craggy rock uh, that you can move down uh, to get to that area. Oh, crap. Uh, John, I'm gonna use my another Divine sense and detect evil. Um, and the range on that is 60 feet, correct? That is right. Yes, 60 feet. Okay. Um, as you concentrate for a moment, um, you dimly feel the sense of evil, uh, but at a distance beyond your reach. There is evil here somewhere. Yep. It's a portal to hell, for sure. <laughs> Something down there. But. We don't shy away from evil, so I need to descend and go down, go down there and deal with it. All right, yeah. all right. Yeah. The, but the party moves down. Uh, as you uh, head down into this area, you see it is filled with crystals of the brightest emerald green that seem to emit their own glow. Uh, yes, you are fascinated by this, M. Mm. You've never seen anything like it. Uh, the luminescence uh, of this is simply stunning. 
And so um, as you walk through, you're surrounded by, by, yeah, wait for it. You're surrounded by this green hue uh, that illuminates everything around you. Um, you can't help but sort of look at your hand uh, in front of you and see the change in color. Uh, you look at the palette um, on your bandolier and uh, they all look different in the green light. Um, but you do feel a sense of foreboding uh, as you move forward. As Felborn goes down with them, he chugs because he, he the one thing he picked up was the spider climb mm -hmm. uh, potion. So okay, but he can make that tactical retreat. If needed. <laughs> uh, all right, so you then are moving down the corridor at a single file. So same marching order you were in before. Yeah. I think so. Yes, and if I could still can, I'll still concentrate on my detect evil if I'm able to. Okay. Um, as you head forward, um, still this eerie illumination, it just it creates a sense of disorientation, um, like nothing you've ever experienced before. And then as you uh, see, it opens up into a larger uh, cavern filled with these same strange crystals. Um, but interestingly, you notice a couple other things. This large cavern has a huge pillar of regular stone in the middle of it that extends up into the ceiling, connects ceiling to floor um, that is, you know, sort of standard stone surrounded in this sea of vermilion uh, all around you. And then uh, there is a, a brilliant blue sapphire uh, stalagmite uh, that sticks up from the ground and uh, kind of is off center from that large pillar. Oh, there it is. So you're, you're sort of there coming down that corridor seeing, you can see the huge pillar in front of you and the blue stalagmite uh, to the side. Fallborn will poke at, poke at Tarmac and say, you should go check that out. <laughs> I'm okay. okay. I'm already heading down there. I'm not gonna, Tarmac's not going alone. <laughs> Tarmac will follow. Fallmar will follow Tarmac just behind. Am I able to focus on that evil now, John? Um, you sense evil dotted throughout this room. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> Do we hear any signs of life? Any people? You know. Um, kind of in their death throws, anything like that. Roll d20. It's an 18 on the die. You, uh, as you strain your ears, uh, this cavern is otherwise completely silent. Uh, you feel like you can barely make out maybe a moan, uh, a groan of some kind in the far distant part of the cavern, uh, beyond the pillar, beyond the blue stalagmite. M would point that out, like, I hear something. I don't know if it's good. <laughs> something it's a trap. That person we need to do, or if it's a person who seeks us uh, to do us harm, but, and then just kind of points in the general area of where she's hearing it. Might as well move in and save him. We need be. Yeah. Yeah, Tomer started work. walking forward the minute he, minute, uh, Balmore said that she should go check it out. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, you all move inside the cavern, and, um, as you step in, your feet crunch. Um, you kind of step between these crystals. Some of them are quite sharp, uh, and their odd luminance casts strange. Um, glow, uh, sort of an up, up lighting on your faces as you look at each other. Um, it's almost eerie, like the macabre of the grave now that you're deeper inside here. Um, as you begin to crunch through the crystals, um, you head past the pillar, and now you can see huddled on the far distant side of the cavern, there appear to be some human forms uh, well past that blue stalagmite. I'm moving towards them, John. All right. 
Um, you advance slowly, um, crunching feet through, and as you get um, closer and closer, you feel stronger and stronger this sense of evil, Arkin. Um, you feel the prickles on your neck rise. You know Heronius is giving you warning. I can also know the location of a celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet at this point. You do not right. sense. You do not sense right. anything of that nature. All right. I'm going to move towards the humanoid figures, uh, assuming, or maybe rightfully or wrongfully, thinking they might be the lost miners. All right. As you get closer, uh, you try to make out. Uh, it's difficult to tell, but they're definitely humanoid. It looks like you see humans and dwarves among them, uh, but they're all uh, in various states of either unconsciousness or torpor. Um, and there's just a gentle moaning uh, as you move closer and closer uh, to them. Uh, the brilliant blue of the stalagmite mingles with the emerald green of the crystals. And um, as you step forward, anything you're doing? Does it look like the blue crystals, like, growing and taking over the green crystal, or is that just a different angle to that? No, you wouldn't say that. Um, but now that you get fairly close to it, you do notice that the crystal seems somehow strangely... Hmm shall we say, organic and moving. As you get within a certain f number of feet, suddenly you see the enormous blue eye open inside the crystal itself. As the eye shutters open, baleful and red, uh, you see a huge maw full of glowing crystalline teeth open. <laughs> cracking uh, as bits of crystal fall away and there's a roar that comes from the creature followed by an unearthly unholy howling sound that makes the crystals vibrate inside the room um, then you see six thin reflective tendrils sprout from the creature's body waving around animating the giant uh, stalactite and four of them with blinding speed, shoot out towards you. We go initiative. Okay. Nora, and you won it last time, so you're yeah, up. Yeah, you're up. <laughs> oh, man, I like the... The DM has a two on the die. Three. Okay, you have initiative. I'll show you the creature. Uh, this is... Artwork actually custom commissioned by uh, Demon Gund. Uh, this is actually his module that we're running, uh, him and his partner. Oh, wow. And uh, this is a crystalline roper. Uh, so it's like a roper, but a crystalline roper um, oh, down here inside this cavern. And you can clearly feel the, the waves coming off of it. This is the creature that has been controlling, mind controlling the other creatures, and it was exposed in the earthquake. All right, uh, let's start with you, Arkin. What are you doing? I am, I've got my sword out, and I am channeling divinity. Uh, my sword, it is now going to admit a bright light for 20 feet and a dim light for 20 feet beyond that, and I call the Hieronius to end this foul creature. So that's my first action, and my second action, but I need to move into combat with it. So what are you going to do? Uh, I, it takes an action to uh, channel divinity. Right. Make a weapon. But so you got movement uh, as well. Do you move closer, or...? Yeah, I'm going to move closer. I'm going to, I'm going to engage it so that way the rest of the party is shielded from it. Okay, well, so for distance-wise, yeah, you're about 60. So with your full action, you're going to close a little over half that distance uh, okay. this round. So you'll be able to engage next round. Let's go to you. Uh, what are you doing, Tarmac? Well, Tarmac will 
Ugh, something even bigger. And he'll, but he'll glow again, and he'll grow in size again. He's just giant spike, grow in size again. Again? Yeah. Is this stacking on the previous one or just where you were before? No, he shrunk down. It yeah, okay. So all right. Down. All right. Do you close? Yeah, I'm closing. All right. You can use a full round action to get there, um, and you'll be able to attack first next round. Um, what are you doing, Fallmorn? Uh, Fallmorn is not going to run up. Str he'll run up and basically get behind uh, Tarmac. <laughs> All right. In his familiar place, uh, carefully protecting Tarmac's uh, flank. Uh, yeah, M, right. M, what are you doing? Uh, we can't hear you. Yeah, M, you're muted. She's muted. Thank you. Sorry. There were a bunch of sirens happening for a little while. Okay. Um, uh, so I'm going to go and run up with the rest of them just with my movement. How close would I be with just standard 30 feet? Uh, 30, 30 feet would put you right about here, halfway between where you were and where the rest of the party is closing on him. And what's the distance between me there and back? 30 feet. You're, you're halfway between. Oh, okay. Uh, I would like to cast Shatter on, on him. Oh. Yes. Or, uh... Okay, hang on here. So you're casting Shadow? Shatter. shatter. Oh, Shatter. Okay. Uh, dun, 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 dun. It needs to make a con saving throw. Um, uh, half uh, on a successful save. A creature made of inorganic material such as stone or crystal or metal has disadvantage. Okay, I'll pull out your your audio is breaking up again for some reason, camera. Like we're we're catching every other word. Um, okay, so let me look at it here. So I have it. I couldn't hear. What, sudden loud ringing noise painfully erupts. Um, creature within a ten foot radius set must a con save. Creature takes three d eight thunder damage on a failed save, half as much on a successful one, uh, and it's disadvantaged if it is uh, as it is. So I'm gonna roll with disadvantage on this. For the saving throw, and it's a DC what? Uh, DC 15. A DC 15, and that is a con save, correct? Yes. Okay, and it did not make it. Uh, nope, it would have if it weren't disadvantaged. It did not make it save. Uh, so uh, roll your 3d8 damage. Awesome. You feel this disruption, uh, and the the powerful sort of vibration and crystal uh, breaks away. Uh, 16 damage total. Nice. Okay. Uh, all right, let's go to you, Norn. Norn's going to uh, fly up a little bit higher um, on his broom, and he's going to hurl down a uh, firebolt at the um, main mass. All right, roll to hit. going to be 13. Uh, that is a miss. Uh, it hits and explodes at the pile, uh, doing nothing. Uh, now it is the creature's turn. Each of these four tentacles lashes out with blinding speed. Um, the first one toward Arkin. And your armor class now, Arkin, with the minus two to your plate is what? 16. 16. And it has a plus. That is a hit. Um, as the tentacle strikes you, it encircles you, grapples you. Um, you take uh, damage from it. Um, ouch! No, 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 not, not, not actually not that. No, actually, you don't take damage from it. It grabs you. You are so close, it sucks you in toward the mouth. Uh, you're lifted off of your feet. Now, to try to resist this, um, I want you to make a uh, roll a uh, roll a d20 until grapple ends. Or roll d20 uh, and add your strength bonus, please. Okay, I'm going to use a plus one as well. Okay. That's a 23 altogether. All right, you manage to, uh, as it starts to yank on you, you 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 kind of push your feet in the ground, and uh, it kind of <laughs> rakes across your armor, and the ten the, the uh, tentacle comes loose. It pulls you closer, but it does not grapple you. Uh, now one lashes out uh, toward M. Uh, 
Actually, no. So it can't. Uh, one toward M. Yes, one toward. So Falmorn, it lashed out toward you while you were closing to get behind because this is a simultaneous action. So you weren't behind him yet. Uh, and then the fourth one is actually lashing out toward you, Norn. Um, all right. Uh, Falmorn. Yes, it does. It snatches you. Uh, you feel that yank. Make that same roll. Add your strength bonus. I'm, I'm going to use both pluses I got because I got no strength bonus. That's a 16. Ooh, on the dot. Uh, you manage also to kind of dig your feet in. Uh, it rakes across your armor. Now you, Norin. It grabs you midair. Um, I don't know. I, I go ahead and make the roll, but um, it's going to be even more difficult because your feet are not centered on anything. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah. Um, I can make it. It's not going to help me up to use my 13 either. Um, this is this a strength check? Yes. Oh, yeah. great. That's, that's my favorite. <laughs> uh, nine. <laughs> It, it pulls you in. As it pulls you in, you see this gaping maw full of jagged crystalline teeth, and it pulls you right into its mouth, bites down on you. And uh, this is most unfortunate um, that it would be your character, um, given your uh, lack of hit points. I'm gonna roll this on the screen um, because it's not fun. Um, you also had your plus eight for me. Yeah, so it's 5d8 plus five on the bite. You take 36 points of damage as it bites down on you. Are you still conscious? Thank you, Em. <laughs> All right, so so only by virtue of the bonus are you even still conscious. Uh, as it crunches down, you feel the piercing of these crystalline teeth, crunching of bone, a rib cracks, your blood squirts out of uh, several different holes. It is the most excruciating pain, um, and it, it has this coldness to it. It's, it's simply animated, inorganic material, the crystals so cold as it penetrates your body. It's a searing pain like nothing you've ever felt before. You hear uh, Norin let out a cry, a piteous cry, and even as he does so, you hear Hedwig uh, as it lets out a, 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 a cry, uh, feeling the pain of its master. The final tentacle uh, lashes out toward you, uh, Tarmac. And of course, you would be the lucky one. Uh, it, uh, you were able to kind of bat the tentacle away and it misses. And now we go to initiative. You won last time, so you roll again. DM has a three. Come on, no. come on, Doran. Um, all right, roll my own. Uh, <laughs> two. Oh, no. Uh, no. 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 Try again. <laughs> All right, um, Norin, you're still in this tentacle. Um, it pulls you out as it's pulling you back. We're going to start with you first because you're still grappled. Uh, as it goes to pull you in, uh, go ahead and make another strength check. Right, roll. A, I, so you got to roll a d20. Add your strength bonus to it, please. Or, or, or your strength back. minus, or whichever it may be. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to 15. Oh, by one! He does not get it. You struggle. You struggle with all your might. Actually made a little more slippery by your own blood, preserving, uh, uh, serving as a lubricant. Um, uh, as you squirm around inside the tentacle, though, you just feel the grating of those jagged... Uh, there, are no, there are no suction cups, just simply bits of crystal that bite into the flesh. As you try to turn, it comes forward again. It's got a plus nine to hit. Yeah. You're, Oh yeah, no, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna ruin my day. It's gonna ruin Hedwig's day. Twenty-eight points of damage. Is Norn within thirty feet of me. Is who? Uh, is Norn within thirty feet of you? Uh, yeah, he he's about you. Know, so this creature is about you know uh, twenty feet tall, and you're standing right at its base. Uh, so yeah, he's he's about twenty feet away from you. All right, um, because as I can do as a reaction, uh, 
protection. Reactor, I can activate my cloud rune and make the attack to me instead of Norm. What what, what is the uh, skill that you're using? Uh, cloud my cloud rune. All right, hang on. Let me Fortress. let. Me... Yeah, let me let me look at it because I am. I, it's very important to me, and this is what I mean by modified. If it makes sense, I will use it. In a situation like this, it's not like it's two people standing next to each other uh, that you can simply, you know, uh, attract it. It, it. This is a grappled figure that is right in the creature's mouth. Uh, so let me look at this. This is. But uh, rune carver, oh cloud rune. Where you're carrying an object, describe it. You have an of dex. Like, once per short, you see 30 feet of you is hit by an attack roll. You can use a reaction to choose a different creature other than the attacker. And third view. Yeah. Uh. That graphic actually have the character in his mouth. It I, does. I, 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 it looks like I, it. I, I, yeah, it does. I, I like, I like it. I like the thought, Thomas. That that's not going to apply in this situation. Um, it was a nice try, though. You all, you all feel uh, this, this sort of. There is a, a moment of silence, as Norin's body, um, is crunched, severed split in twain. You hear his bones snap. Again, you hear Hedwig and the owl kind of spirals down to the ground and uh, blood comes from Norin's mouth. Now we go to the party. Your attack. Let's start with you. Uh, You're closest there. Go ahead, Tarmac. Okay. Then Tarmac will obviously uh, yell as he sees his his companion into this mouth and just the blood coming out. He'll just roar. And he'll come down with his uh, mace or the ball uh, with great weapons. Uh, that'll, be a, that'll be a miss. That's only an eight. Nope. Yeah, second attack. Ooh, that's a one on the die. Ooh, no! Roll again? Oh. <laughs> that's a one on the die. Oh, no! Okay. It's nice in here. It's nice oh. and cozy. <laughs> Here's the way the blue box rule works. On the fumble. If you roll two nat ones in a row, it's not just a fumble. Your fumble has a plus 20 on the percentile roll. So I need you now to roll percentile dice. Oh my Those God. dice were doing so well for me. <laughs> uh, 72. So it's a 92. Oh, no. This is not good. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Um, so looking at the uh, the table here, and uh, we had... Uh, Palmorn and all right, so um, unbelievable mishandling of your weapon. You swing. You're so full of anger at watching Norin uh, crushed, much as you have crushed these insects. You swing. You overswing as it bounces off a crystal. Your mole follows through. You're going to put a critical on one of your comrades. One to three. It is Falmorn. Four to six. It is. <laughs> it is Arkin. It is Arkin. Near him. You, yeah, uh, yeah, you were because you were closing. Everybody saw simultaneous action. So as you're closing, right as you get there, Arkin, you come running up with your blade, singing in the name of Heronius, and you see, uh, you see Tarmac's maul come around. Thunk, Tarmac, roll percentile dice again. Oh my God! Uh, Eighty-three. Oh! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Eighty-three on the tables. Uh, that is a level 12 crit uh, with the maul uh, to the arm. Uh, all right, so, oh my goodness. 
And we're going a little over time here. Jay said it's okay. He's already notified Rob. We'll finish up here pretty quickly, <laughs> maybe more quickly than I thought. We'll all be dead. So. Uh, your blow smashes into your opponent's shoulder, tearing and crushing the nerves in the arm. No amount of magical or mundane healing can restore function, leaving the arm hanging useless and paralyzed from the uh -huh. shoulder, atrophying muscles and tendons shredded. Um, you have to make a saving throw or fall unconscious for, from shock. Uh, all right, so I need you to roll a d20 and add your constitution bonus, Arkin. Oh, I will use my plus one. <laughs> I cannot believe you rolled two ones. I cannot believe you rolled two ones. Yeah, unfortunately, I passed out. I, I rolled a three on the die. A three on the tie. A six altogether, so I'm unconscious. Arkin... Uh, just, I mean, it's just unbelievable. The power uh, behind this blow as it glances off a crystal comes around right as you reach, and it's it's like your force moving forward at full speed. His force, boom, the crunch is sickening. Uh, it crushes through your shoulder into your ribs, collapsing your ribs. Searing hot pain goes through your body, and in moments you just black out and fall to the ground. Uh, How much damage do I take? Um, hey, somebody can wake me up. Fallmorn, what are you doing? Oh my gosh. The Fallmorn would probably actually run, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, I mean, yeah. do, do what Fallmorn wants to do. This is your character. Oh, but I don't want to be the guy that ran. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking about running. Hey, you, 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 gotta, you gotta stay in character, man. <laughs> well, fine. You know what? Fallmorn looks, looks, he sees. You know, we see we see one man get eaten. What the big giant man turns around and wallops his friend and like <laughs> crushes him. And um, he turns to M and he's like, "I think it's time for that contingency plan." <laughs> um, and with that, M is gonna cast invisibility on herself and Falmorn, and he's gonna run. And Falmorn's basically is going to book it. He's going to dash as far as he can back from this thing. And he's got the, you know, climbing potion. So if he gets to the back, he could climb. She's also going to use uh, one of her final charges of um, Mantle of Inspiration for the remaining four people who are still on the field. So temporary hit points and full movement speed. Uh, uh, three, there are three, there are three of you on the field now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do we get that, do we get the extra movement speed now? Uh, so I'm Yeah, running. all right, so you, you, you are, you are not going to be attacked because uh, you've turned invisible, Cameron. The creature cannot see you. However, a tentacle does fly out uh, at you, Fallmorn. Uh, to I also cast, I cast it at a higher level. So I cast it on myself and Fallmorn. Okay, all right. And <sighs> Fallmorn, you 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 see you see this tentacle. It lashes out. You can almost you feel the wind coming from behind you. At the last minute, you turn sideways. It crushes some of the green crystals and snaps back, and you get out of the way. You stand alone, Tarmac, before this creature. You you hear all of your as you you look down at the crumpled form of Arkin. Well, if he wanted it. You, you looked out the crumpled form of Arkin, and the creature stands before you. What do you do? I'm going. Well, I already used my attack, so yeah, I'm, I'm not moving. I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay right on my ground. All right, initiative. My, next round I'm not, attack. Not dead. Initiative. The DM has a six. Uh, I have a one. Okay. <laughs> okay. New dice. Four tentacles, all aimed straight at you now. Um. Done. That's a miss. You Done. bat one away. <laughs> Second one hits. Third one uh, uh, hits. All right, so three. One tentacle lashes onto a thick leg. The other tentacle lashes onto the other thick leg. One wraps around your arm, and then you feel the yank. Um, this is going to be a difficult saving throw for you to make because you have three tentacles on it, but go ahead and roll d20 and add your strength bonus. So it would be a d20 plus five. Okay, four. Um, well, strength's only plus four. Oh, plus four, okay. Because I don't have the belt. Oh, okay, that's right. I keep forgetting you have a belt. I have skills, and I actually am proficient in, in athletics, which is usually the, the uh, check for grapple, which would give me a plus seven to the net. Okay, all right, go ahead and roll. Thirteen. 
<laughs> Even your enormous girth with three of these uh, tentacles and it pulls you toward its mouth. <laughs> bites down. You feel the crunch through your body. 5d8. No, not six. 5d8 plus five. Not bad. 29 points of damage. I will also, as a reaction, uh, stone endurance that to reduce uh, 11 of that. All right. So you take 18 points of damage from that bite. Um, and now uh, it is it is your turn. But y is your maul two-handed? Yes. <laughs> you have one hand bound by a tentacle, uh, you have one free hand. What do you want to do? Um, so Matt, you're kind of like sideways now. In fact, we should have you, uh, John, if you can, like pull him up there and <laughs> he's he's kind of sideways with one free arm. Sorry, do what now? Uh, just lift him up a little bit. He's been lifted up in the air. He's, there are three tentacles that have him. Yeah, kinda, he's, he's kind of right up there. Yeah, perfect. Okay, and I'm I'm right next to this thing, right? Yeah, it's like you're well, you're. I mean, it's it's already taken a chunk out of you. Yeah. And it's like you know, it swallows, took a, a bit out of your thigh, and now it's gonna pull you back in for another one. Right. Can I? Can I? Would I be able to get my spare uh, warhammer? It's only a one-handed weapon. Um. Yeah. Go ahead and make a dex check. Roll. Roll. Uh, roll uh, your d20 and add your dex bonus. Uh. Twelve. You, you manage, kind of floating, uh, you pull behind your back. You had it in a nice, convenient spot. You pull the hammer off. I'll let you take a swing with it. It's going to be at a minus two to hit, uh, and you're going to be at a minus four to damage because you can't, you can't get your body weight and your power behind it. You know, you're just basically swinging with an arm. Uh, that's a four on the die, so uh, third. Minus two eleven. Yeah. Do I still have the plus four? No. No. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't have mattered. The hammer clatters off the crystalline surface. Um, roll initiative. DM has a five on the die. Two. All right. It pulls you in uh, for another bite. Crunch uh, through your splint mail. Uh, it's now hanging in uh, sh ragged, shattered remnants. And this time it is 34 points of damage <laughs> as it bites down. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, stone endurance again. How many times can you use that? Three. Okay. Uh, does the oil do anything on the armor that he put on there? Uh, no, the oil was specifically for uh, the rust monsters. It would it would prevent it from. Um, and you guys, I'll just be candid with you as a DM. You would have faced more of those rust monsters, but I removed some for sake of time. Uh, we were just running out of time in the game, okay. so. So, but that's only reduced of six this time. All right, so you took twenty eight points of damage this time. Um, now uh, go ahead and roll with your hammer again. What? Right. All right, so in the chat, I'm going to do the second Troll Lord giveaway. Uh, you have just a few seconds. Type exclamation point troll. And I will run that. Thank you, Rob, for your patience. I won't take much longer. I, this is not going the way I thought it would go, though. <laughs> well, I tell you. Uh, I thought we had this. Yeah, I mean, you guys, it just, I mean, everything turned with yeah. that fumble. That fumble was like... I, I, that fumble killed us. That fumble yeah. literally killed us. All right. The winner of the second Troll Lord gift card is Bruingal. Congratulations, Bruingal. Um, make sure you Discord Manda, Mystical Unicorn, in our Discord with your email address, and we'll make sure we get you the giveaway. We have one more giveaway tonight, um, so let me set this keyword, and we're going to be done here in moments. Yeah, we've got to wrap up. Um, what was your uh, role on that attack? Uh, total for me would be 18, and then if it's minus 2, it would be 16. Okay, yeah. This thing has an AC of 20. Hard crystalline surface. Um, so, yeah, your hammer bounces off, and... Do I get a second attack? 
Uh, yes, yeah, you can swing it twice, yeah, uh-huh. Uh, okay, that's also a miss. And I'm gonna action surge to attack three times. Okay. Mm -hmm. right Type exclamation point tube in the chat. You have a chance to win this uh, exclusive, only get it here on Blue Box, Blue Box laser engraved wooden dice tube. Uh, this thing is super cool. That's it's got the Blue Box logo, exclamation point tube, not lube, tube in the chat. All right, other two rolls. That's a miss, miss and miss. <laughs> It's it, it's 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 like you, you can't get the power behind it, and your your hammers slamming and slamming and slamming off the crystals, and then it comes in for the bite. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Is that a crit, Dad? It, it's a possible oh, crit. I've got to roll again to confirm. Oh no! Well, you're going out in style, my friend. <laughs> the dice have been unkind this evening to my intrepid party. Well, we won a nit like two times, so you know, you knew it wasn't going to go well. I don't I think if Tarmac had been eaten first, maybe it would have been filled up and you would have let the rest of us go. <laughs> Wouldn't have had room for Norrin. <laughs> no, it's just an appetizer. Arkin. As you lay there, um, you're having strange nightmares. Um, you feel as though Heronius is there, but you can't speak to him. Uh, it's, it's as though there's a, there's a glass wall between you and the heavens. It's a, one of the most vivid nightmares you've ever had. And in the midst of it, you hear a low wail, like a cry from the beyond. You hear Tarmac's final words. Tarmac, as the creature pulls you this time slowly, inexorably toward its maw, you have sensed the pressure of its thoughts. It has been exerting thought control. It has this ability to telepathically signal, and you feel a rudimentary concept, not so much a word, the concept as the creature's maw bites directly into your neck, <laughs> severs your head from your body, bites your head off as the blood spews from your carotid and your body twitches. You have those few seconds of consciousness um, that the brain still has oxygen in blood. As your head tumbles inside the crystalline maw, the last image you have, the last feeling you have is I'm bigger than you. <laughs> oh, man. And that is how we conclude uh, Blue Box uh, <laughs> Rescue in Veramar Mines. Uh, we did have both... Um, uh, Fallmorn, uh, well done. He got away, uh, just like Finn. Man, this is this is. You're going to be typecast now, my friend. Uh, I imagine him and M when they get like to be outside. She just looks at him and goes, "I suppose we become the storytellers now." <laughs> we guys are the only ones that can have this picture if you paint it well. So it's going to be worth a lot. You guys didn't mm -hmm. drag me out of there. I wasn't dead. <laughs> Oh, we were running. Sorry. <laughs> you would deserve. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, I mean, wow. I'm not a good person. Uh, now, I'm supposed to be raiding into uh, Robert, right? Or who am I raiding? Yeah, I'm raiding into Robert. Uh, so hang with us. We're going to give Robert a great raid in just a moment. But type exclamation point tube in the chat. Uh, players, I want to say, like, I, 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 I hope you know. Uh, TPK was not uh, the goal. It was not foreordained. We joke about them a lot, but they rarely happen. Um, uh, today, this was really a function of uh, the, the role play and the dice. And the dice were just, my dice got hot, and then you rolling that double one, and then not just the double one, but then the 72, which makes it a 92 by my house rules, and then the 83 on the crit against... Um, against him, that was the most unbelievable series of epic fail after Tarmac had been so darn incredible the entire night. Um, it was it was just meant to be. So 
uh, as your humble DM, I apologize uh, for what I did to you tonight, uh, but I want you to know I very much enjoyed playing the game with you, and I hope you enjoyed the game as well. Um, in the postscript, uh, I'll let you guys decide whether or not uh, Fallmorn and um, M actually return to the town <laughs> and say anything. Um, uh, who knows what happens to Sir Arkin? Uh, Arkin is laying unconscious there at the foot. Uh, maybe this creature only chooses to, dev to devour things which are apparently alive. Maybe there will be a second uh, episode of this at some point. Uh, but I think everybody did a great job, and I want to thank, again, all of our amazing mad chatters tonight. All right, let's do our last giveaway. Uh, exclamation point tube in the chat. Uh, I'll put it in there just so you can see it. This is for the... Uh, custom uh, dice tube from our good friend uh, Darren at Ferex Fabrications. It's a blue box dice tube. And uh, join us. Uh, you know, stay all around tonight. We got the joust, uh, the grand joust coming up here in just a little bit. Uh, and then we'll have games all day tomorrow. I'm back at 1 o'clock here with a, a, a stream titled Siege and Desperation. Uh, that sounds like a jolly good time. And then uh, Sunday we wrap up uh, the VGHC. And then we'll be back Tuesday night with Greyhawk Awakening. Um, I want to say thank you to each of my players and as we give the uh, the viewers a chance to finish popping their stuff in there, I'll give each of you just one quick word to each other or to uh, the fans, and let's start with you tonight, uh, Chip. Hey guys, thanks for coming out and uh, checking out the stream, and John, this was uh, an amazing time, uh, the most fun I've had dying in a while. Uh, <laughs> but uh, thank you to everyone, all of the other, our other players, too. We had a really, really fun time, so I appreciate it. Yeah, you did a great job, Chip. And Norn was such a fun character. Um, I, I really would like these are like when you fall in love with these characters, you would like to see something more than a one shot with them. Uh, they were such fun, fun characters. Uh, all right, let's go to you, Cameron. Any final thoughts? Um, so enjoyed this. Such a delight to get to play with y'all. Really appreciated uh, getting the beer on the table with y'all. Very good, uh, Thomas. Uh, this was this was a lot of fun. Uh, my dice uh, obviously ended the game in a way I I did not want at all. So it goes uh, for us, or especially uh, for Tarmac. Uh, but the dice tell a story, and uh, obviously he wanted me to take our my own party out. So uh, <laughs> it was a blast. Uh, so far on, on blue box is one shots, uh, two to blue box, zero to couple. Is that right? What happened to you last time? I don't remember. Oh. I was on the same one with the Overgore. Oh, you were in the Overgore. That's right. Yeah. That's that That is the only other time we've come close to a TPK on uh, any of these uh, one shots. And that was because the Overgore was the Overgore. Um, and of course, as we already mentioned, only Finn survived. Uh, let's go to uh, aforementioned uh, Finn. Falmorn, Don, uh, anything you'd like to say to your fellow players of the audience? Uh, they were all great. I had a great time. It was a lot of fun. Um, so I've been on three blue boxes now. Uh, we did good on one, and I have survived TPKs twice. <laughs> so I, I guess that's a record of some kind. I need to get a badge for that. Well done, sir. Well done. And then uh, as we go to Greg, uh, I love Justinius. And uh, look, let's just be honest. The only person that could have stopped Justinius today was Tarmac. Uh, we just there, there were no enemies that were going to defeat you uh, with the power of Heronius, my friend. Only Tarmac could do that. Any final thoughts, Greg? Yeah, I don't think I've ever been killed in such an illustrious fashion. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, obviously, it's, the, it's just the dice, uh, Thomas. It's not your fault. It's just the dice. Um, I signed up for this uh, convention two days ago. How there was still a ticket available for this? We had a last minute cancellation. You you, you nabbed it. We had uh, someone that thought he would have a computer by this point and he didn't get his PC in time. And so he dropped and you, you nabbed it the same day he dropped. It was incredible. I wasn't sure whether to go to Crucible Con or to, you know, to do this. And when I saw there was an event open for your your stream, I said, I'm, I'm jumping in on this. Oh, wow. You passed up Crucible Con for this. Thank you so much, man. That's an uh, honor. Hurricane too, but that's <laughs> <laughs> that is an oh, honor. Man. Okay. All right. So the winner of the tube is Mikey B. Let's go, Mikey B. I'm pretty sure I have all your information, uh, but just to make sure it's updated, please go ahead and send that to Manda. Uh, so she has it. And I want to say thank you again to everyone on behalf of the entire Blue Box and Virtual Greyhawk family. We had a great time tonight. Players, you guys were amazing. And let's go ahead and kick off off this raid if I can find the right window here and 
It's not that one. It's not that one. It's that one. And here we go. Three, two, one. Say hi to Rob for me and stick with us tonight. We got lots more Greyhawk Awakening, our virtual Greyhawk Con coming uh, this weekend. And as the raid kicks off, this is Blue Box. Raiding in three, two, and one. Raid now. Bye-bye, everybody. Blue Box.